everybody. Glad to have you with us on the College Football Tonight scoreboard. Reese Davis along with Rod Gilmore and Coach John Makovic. We're going to be taking you out to the start of BYU and Utah. It's coming your way in just a couple of minutes. Get you caught up on what's happening this day after Thanksgiving in college football. You know, just one time in the last 28 years had Nebraska lost to a team that finished the season with a losing record. Lost to Iowa State back in 1992. Been even longer since that had happened to them in Lincoln. 1968 in Colorado coming in trying to spring the upset. Fourth quarter, Buffs down by four. Cortland Johnson had a huge day. Buck 55, one of his three touchdowns right there. Colorado up 24-21. Game tied at 24. Kicking game, a problem. Buff not sound in the kicking game. Mark Mariscal blocked by Keo Craver. Chris Kelsey comes up with it. Huskers blocked a couple of field goals on the day. Later in the fourth, here comes Eric Crouch. Yeah, Eric Crouch. If you don't get off your blocks, you're not going to get to Eric Crouch. He made Colorado pay. Went for a buck 25. Huskers up by seven. Buffs would come back. Behind Craig Oates, look strong, coach. Great young freshman. He had a sensational second half. And the thing that he did was use these little screen passes when he was in trouble, and Nebraska did not, did not react quickly enough. Cortland Johnson getting his first down there, second and 10. Oates to the end zone. John Minardi, 25 of 41, 254. Colorado down one. Barnett says, let's try to win it right here. The freshman firing. Javon Green and Colorado on top, 32-31. Less than a minute to go. Catches the back end of the ball. Look at the concentration by Green. But a short kickoff put Nebraska in position. And Eric Crouch fires a dart to Bobby Newcomb to the 12. And here's Josh Brown. Just three of seven coming in. He can throw out that record. Josh Brown saves the Huskers, much to Barnett's chagrin. And Nebraska does it to Colorado again. 34 to 32. The Huskers won nine games, 32 straight seats. Yeah, Colorado played well, had a chance, but the kicking game cost them two missed field goals, a couple of block kicks, and then poor pass defense on that last drive. That's the old prevent defense rod. They were too loose. They let Bobby Newcomb catch two big passes in that final drive. During halftime, too, I want to address you guys about that kickoff, too, the short kickoff for the Buffs. This is Texas A&M and Texas, and big plays being made by the Horns receivers. Chris Sims to Sloan Thomas, 55 yards to the house, and Texas pouring it on, A&M 31-17. Texas wide receiver stepping up freshmen, Williams and company, Johnson making big plays, Sims letting them do the work. So 31-17, they are late in the third quarter of that game. We are now ready for the battle for the Beehive boot. BYU and Utah and Lavelle Edwards finale after his 29-year tenure at BYU. Let's go out to Salt Lake City. All right, Reese, it is hard to believe, but after 29 years, 256 wins, a national championship, 20 conference championships, and countless imitators. Today, Lavelle Edwards falls at a career. Without Lavelle Edwards, I don't play football. I don't really learn half of the great lessons I've learned in my life. I've never heard anyone say a negative word about Lavelle Edwards. I've got a lot of respect for Lavelle. He's, he's, uh, it was a lot of fun. Even though we had our run-ins, we did have a lot of laughs together. They've been Destiny's Darlings almost too many times to count. Lavelle's legacy will include the come from behind, lead all the time, and championship caliber wins that will define his chapter in the college football record book. He can see more in you than you ever thought or dreamed of you having. And I think that that's kind of the greatest compliment you can give a coach. Salt Lake City should be packed, 45,000 plus, on hand today for the Holy War, the battle for the Beehive Boot, matching the Cougars of BYU and the youth of Utah. And welcome to Salt Lake City. Dave Barnett to be joined by Bill Curry, Mike Golick, and in a bit, Michelle Tafoya. Impossible to think of BYU football without the image of Lavelle Edwards popping into the mind the same way. Joe Paterno's mind uh, comes together with Penn State. Bobby Bowden associated with Florida State. That's what BYU football is. And after today, 29 years, age 70, it's all over for Lavelle Edwards as the head coach of the Cougars. And earlier, 
He spoke with our Michelle Tafoya. Coach, it's the last game in a long and illustrious career. It's BYU-Utah. You've asked your players to make it business as usual, but how can it be? Well, uh, they'll try, and they have tried, and, uh, and I'm sure there's other emotions, but uh, I think they've done a pretty good job with it, and, uh, at least from what I've uh, detected, but I, I think we're ready to play. How about your emotions? You walked out onto the field a couple of hours ago, took a look around. You've been being spoken to by a number of players and coaches. What are you feeling right now? Well, you're so uh, wrapped up in the game that uh, it's pretty much like any other game, but I think we'll set in one, maybe sometime, but... Uh, I, I honestly haven't had any thoughts about it being the last game or whatever. It's just basically uh, business as usual and try to get uh, try to get a victory because this is a big one for us. Will you try to savor it, Coach? Oh, yeah. No, I, I have all year long. I mean, even though we've struggled, we've had some bad moments and whatever, it's, uh, I've enjoyed it because I've enjoyed the players and uh, we've had good practices. They work hard. Uh, hadn't always gone as well as we'd like, but hey, that's, 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 the, way, that's the way football is. And so, uh, but I am, yeah. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Bill, he took over 1972 when the wishbone was the dominant offense. Look around college football today, and the teams that are in the hunt for the national title all play the way BYU has for 29 years. Is he the most influential figure in today's game? In a word, yes. And the reason for the emulation is because he so consistently stuck to his gun, taught his quarterback, and indeed his entire team precision passing. The benefits to the program are the kinds of things that happened last week when a third stringer, Brendan Doman, came to the New Mexico State game, threw for over 300 yards, ran for over 50 yards. No BYU quarterback has done that since 1983. And Mike Gulley. Those are Steve Young numbers. That's got to worry the defense for Utah, right? Well, I don't know about that, Bill. It may go the other way. This Utah defense is the number one defense against the pass in the entire country. X's and O's, they're a disciplined defense. Don't take a lot of chances. They'll try and force Dolman into mistakes. Now the intangibles. There's eight seniors on this defense who quite, quite literally, they don't care that it's Lavelle Edwards' last game ever to coach. This is their last collegiate game. There's going to be a lot of emotion on their side of the field as well. They don't want to be the memory of Lavelle Edwards' last game as a winner. They, they'd like to go up to the coach after the game and say, great career, coach. Sorry, your last game had to be a loss. Five of the last seven years, Utah has defeated BYU. The road team, however, has won the last four. An emotional day in Salt Lake. We'll kick it off coming up. The Canon Rebel 2000. When circumstances change, you'll know how to turn a snapshot into a photograph. It's that simple. Now that's creative. The Rebel 2000 from Canon. This Saturday at Sears, we open extra early, and we've marked on prices extra low. From 8 until noon, take 10% off everything, even sale prices. So don't fool around. It's the most important time of the year. Our first lesson this morning will be the sit and stay command. And say sit, stay, sit, stay. Big trouble. Buy online. Nobody's neutral today. Not in Rice Eccles Stadium, where it was snowing a couple hours ago, but the clouds have blown away and uh, it's very cool. But not sure if we're going to get any more snow. 33 degrees and dropping. Wind, perhaps a factor. Three, four and five miles an hour blowing out of that end zone as you see it. And uh, for the last time, Lavelle Edwards trolling the Cougar sideline. 256 wins, six all-time. He passed Tom Osborne last week in closing at home with a victory over New Mexico. Immediately afterwards, they renamed Cougar Stadium Lavelle Edwards Stadium. He got emotional about that. He is emotional about this as well. Utah has won the toss and the third. And the opening kick by Golden Wetman will not be returned. So BYU with quarterback number three on the year, junior out of here in Salt Lake, Brandon Doman, his second start. He was spectacular against the Lobos, 349 yards, and rushed for 51. Luke Staley, the oft-injured but still dangerous running back with Sataki, also in the backfield. Margin Hooks, the leading receiver again this year with Pittman on the other side, and Opa Hungawi, the dangerous tight end. And as Mike said, they go against me, top 
best defense in the country. Across the board, the best defensive unit in the Mountain West Conference and one of the ten best in Division I. Well, and we'll start on the ground with the win for short riders to Luke Staley. And the first man there is the rover, Wes Stefunga. Offensive line for Brigham Young. Riker, Whiting, Sukanik, McCubbin, and Archibald. Defensive front for Utah. Alfusi, Smith, Kimoyatu, and Bauer. Watch Kemoyatu, the run stopper, and Kafusi, the outstanding freshman pass rusher. Tough guy. Decimate options. Their coordinator, Kyle Whittingham. Really the way these games go, if Brigham Young runs on us, they win. If we keep them from running, we win. Doma's first pass is kicked off by Andre Dyson. Goodbye. Touchdown, Utah, 44 yards. Dyson has his fourth touchdown return of the season. His third on a pick. He also has a fumble return for a touchdown. Oh, we're just going to do the rest of the lineup, Dave, and I was going to talk about Dyson. What a great job he's been doing. Read that one all the way. Just broke on the pass and didn't really. He's been doing his whole career. Small career interception. Well, go ahead and talk about it. I will. Now, well, they're going to kick first, then I will. Ryan Kanashiro. Makes it seven and up in 52 seconds into the game. Senior Clinton Utah, brother of the Tennessee Titans, Kevin Dyson Andre has made a habit of returning takeaways for touchdown. Welcome to Wrestling on the 24-yard Andre Dyson. Interception return for a touchdown, so Wetman again has it teed up. Feels it on a hop at the 10-yard line. And his return will end at the 23. And another look at the fourth pick of the year, the third brought back by Dyson. Well, it got tipped right there by Jason Capuzzi. Just got a little bit of it to knock it off flight. Don't know how much it would matter, but he's in the quarterback's face. Well, it really wouldn't have mattered because it's a too deep coverage, Mike. And the rule for quarterback is if there's a safety behind the hard corner, the corner hard being described so because he's up, he's obviously up in his coverage. You've got a man over here on the hash who's going to play the deep for the corner, which means he can come up on this ball without regard to the deep pass. You don't make that throw. Hard lesson for young Dunn. Not a good start in his second start. There's a Cougar quarterback. Pitch out goes to Staley. Ridden out hard by West Funk at the 25-yard line after a short game. Leading tackler for the youth defense. 76 stop for the senior from Hawaii, Safunga. We said earlier we could be 0-10 coming into this BYU game, win it, and I'd still feel satisfied about the season. A little insight into how they approach the Holy War. Really given two, so second and eight. Roman with time, fires from margin hook. Over the middle, very close to the first down. Wrestle down by Brandon Dart to free safety. Now, we never had a chance to look at the rest of the Utah defense. Thanks to the heroics of Dyson, but they're the linebackers of Laval, Deckard, and Tafunga. You've already met number 21, Ray, the other corner. Dart, an amazing medical story, gets to start his final game alongside Kim Wu Christian. Yeah, I won't talk about Dyson because you said the pick, so you mentioned Dart. This is his seventh season in collegiate football. We'll get into all the reasons for that, but this may be the first actual college season he finishes without being injured. And he's joined Social Security while playing his last <laughs> year in college. It's remarkable. Brooks did get enough for the first at the 33. Staley again with the line of scrimmage. Behind the middle linebacker, Sheldon Deckard, the second leading tackle. Sophomore from St. George, they say legit 4-5 speed. They don't have to bring him out on passing downs. He can cover anybody. 
Well, take a good look, because after today, you won't see that face on that sideline anymore, and that will take some getting used to. Well, there's just some things you take for granted, and one of them is that Lavelle Edwards is going to be on the sideline for BYU. You're right, Dave. It's going to be very interesting next year when he's not there. After no game, second and ten. Marker is down. will be to Mike Regal for no gain as we wait for the indication. In the out of Tacoma, Washington. It's another mistake by Brandon Doman, who's feeling the heat a little bit now. It's a lot of different when you have to practice all. Let's listen to the call. Full start. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Remain second down. The tight end was coming across, and he didn't allow him time to get set. And let's send it down to Michelle Tafoy. Well, a rude awakening here in Utah for the quarterback, Doman, in his, his, his second start. He threw that interception early, and right away from the Utah stands, he had these thrown at him. Utah red plastic footballs. They're kind of hard, too, Dave. Oh, I bet. 33 <laughs> degrees, <laughs> like a chunk of ice. <laughs> and the Doman numbers for the year. And he did the engineer a big... 37-13 victory last week over New Mexico. A little different here in Salt Lake City in the badly thrown pass intended for the tight end, Doug Jolly. A little bit of pressure on Dolman. Right now, they, they've got to get him calmed down with some easy passes. And I and you think a hitch was a pretty easy pass in the first sequence, Bill, as Andre Dyson said, no, it's not. But Dolman right now may be a swing pass. That was even not, not a difficult uh, pass right there with a tight end dragging across the middle. This is a very sound Utah defense that is going to try and force Dolman into mistakes, and they're doing that early. 300 passing yards, 50 rushing yards. First man since 1983, Steve Young. You can see both those players for the season. Now on third and long, Delman has to scramble. Finds an open target, and just short of the first down is Kalani Sataki, his fullback, on his 20th catch of the year. He gets him 12 yards and the Funga knocks him out. One of the things that Delman does extremely well as a former wishbone quarterback is to move his feet move in the pocket watch his movement here there's a three rusher very calm sits in there finds the open receiver gets it to his fullback sataki nice play the kind of thing that he'll need as the day progresses aaron Edmonds is the top putter in the conference almost 44 yards per pitch steve smith is arguably the top punt returner in Utah history. He is 80 yards away from the career record for punt return yards. Four touchdowns is uh, already top in school history. He's had two called back this year. Hey, he can go any time. Evans will bring this one down to Smith with the 18. And after the whistle, he pitches that one. That's going to end at the 28. 41 yards on the kick, 10 on the return, nothing on the pitch. 7 to nothing, Utah early in Salt Lake. Seven to nothing, Utah, although their offense is only now taking the field for the first time. They take over at the 28-yard line. And their third starting quarterback of the year, redshirt freshman from Salt Lake City, Lance Rice, in control. And they start on the ground with Adam Pate, who leads the conference at 81 rush yards per game. Rice getting the start. They have expanded the playbook for him a little bit every week. He runs the full system now in the final game of the regular season. Pate, the top runner, Christensen Smith, and Russell, who has returned from a broken arm. At nickel is the tight end. Utah offensively, nowhere near where they had been or where they expected to be. They were the odds on favorite to win the mountain there coming into the season. Only three and three in conference, four and six overall. That is worth a two-game winning streak. Right through the fifth, he went in motion. And dragged down with the 28, it'll be third and 10. Jared Lee reading it from free safety. The blockers for the youths up front, Kalfusi, Ta'amu, Richardson, Gross, and Wilson. 
And then here's the front. They will see from the Cougars, Denny, Olsen, Chris Hoke, and Satema Nala. And that defensive line is one of the biggest in BYU history, but still they're giving up about 25 pounds of man to the O-line for Utah, which averages 300. So that D-line will slant a little bit and stunt. If the field starts to get sloppy, advantage is going to go to the big hogs on the Utah offensive line. Field already questionable at best. And uh, fortunate that more snow isn't falling at the moment. Bryce looking over the middle and overthrows Chris Christensen. He was running open to midfield. Good look at the Cougar linebackers and secondary we'll see today. Walking horse, true freshman, very talented. And other leading tackler, Kelly on the weak side in the secondary. Luke's brother, Dustin, Lafitte, Lee, and Smith. So Golden Weapon who has handled some of the placement kicking this year, but also the full-time punter. That's just under 39 yards per kick. Ned Stearns awaiting Whitman's kick at the 30 of the Cougars. This strong leg, he's kicked a 55-yard field goal and has punted 67 yards. He's calls for the fair catch after 42 yards. So Brigham Young, seeing Utah score defensively, there's a team that was already minus 10 on the year in turnovers. Utah minus 10 as well on turnovers. And if you're looking for reasons both these teams came in below 500, you can start right there. Mike. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's an absolute killer, something you can never put into the equation on when it's going to occur in, in a game. And right now, outside of the turnovers, Doman, the young quarterback for BYU, they've got to simplify it, at least to get him a little bit of confidence. Utah's just out leaving right now. From their 29-yard line, on their third possession, they start to the top three for the Bailey. And youth ready for him after the pickup of about three. Sheldon Deckard and Kimball Christensen. Where does Edward stand all time? Division one, you got Paterno, one behind Bear Bryant, Pop Warner, Bowden, Mike Edwards, age 70. And then at 256 after last week, he passed Tom Osborne of Nebraska, sixth all time, and third active behind Paterno and Bowden. Not bad company. It's like the company I keep up here, I guess, huh? It's something like the company. <laughs> Let's keep losing our heads here, Michael. Norman, well protected, and the pass. Way short of hook. So Doman trying to settle everybody else down and settle himself down. Let's send it down to Michelle. Well, after 29 years of head coaching at BYU, Lavelle Edwards leaves behind a legacy that will be defined by the quarterback position. Check out the list. Gifford Nielsen, his first All-American quarterback named in 76. Mark Wilson in 1979, a consensus All-America. The notorious Jim McMahon, another consensus All-America in 81. Then Steve Young, BYU's third consensus All-America in five years. 84, Robbie Bosco, Ty Detmer, Steve Sarkeesian. Amazing list, Dave. Well, they're throwing deep for Hooks, who tried to make a one-handed pass, even as he was perhaps being interfered with. Yeah, the flag finally thrown. Tom Gray dipoing all around that day, <laughs> perhaps being interfered with. Very good, David. He just took him by the arm. He just him in the game. And don't think that was a late flag. The ref was trying to get that flag for about five minutes. He just couldn't find it that anywhere in his person. The thing was hooked to his jock strap. <laughs> he couldn't get that thing out of no, no, he couldn't. Woo. I thought it was such a delicate way for Dave to say this. Hooks has got a step on him. He's got him beat right there, and it's a nice throw. Andre's smart enough to say, okay, I'll take the 15. I'm going to get you on the ground. It's the left arm right there that comes across, and, and his right arm holding Hooks' left arm down. So that's why he's so hooked on He's able to get his one arm up. Hey, don't, don't we'll take it any way you can get it, huh? That's right. <laughs> and the fans obligated to boo yeah. after that thing. They can see the interference, but they ain't about to admit it. have to boo. But I must say, Doman made his best throw of the day there, Mike. That touched him. That, yeah. that was a nice throw. That was right on the mark. Very catchable. I think, too, the official has to think for a second now, was that catchable before making the call, which might explain his uh, reluctance to pull that flag quite so quickly. came in with great credentials for the Utah Player of the Year. Three brothers were also good with all of them were wide receivers. He's a wish strong quarterback and shows some of the running ability takes it down to the 35-yard line. 
A gain of 17 yards. And I'll tell you why that was smart, and I'm glad he didn't throw. When you're a quarterback that can move and can run a little bit, as we talked about, he was the uh, high school wishbone quarterback. I like seeing those kind of quarterbacks running early. Now he's become a threat. Utah defense knows he'll pull it down, so now they may have to, in the future of this game, may have to assign someone to him if he's getting out of the pocket and running a little bit. Very happy for him that he ran this time and didn't throw. Yeah, I saw you chase those guys. You didn't have to say that. Oh, that's, I'm up here now, so I love it. <laughs> From the 35 of the East, first and 10, Brigham Young moving it for the first time. Back to the air, and again, he throws it behind his target. And for Oklahoma Gower, the tight end. So that's quite a legacy that Michelle just ran down. Eight All-American quarterbacks. These uh, throwers have thrown for over 56 miles, and they have this record, 14 games with a 500-yard passer. 13 of them have come with Edwards on the sideline. And Robbie Bosco, now the quarterback coach, is looking for the draft championship at 84 on that list. Broadway Staley looks to get left. Can't get away from Tafunga. We talked at the top, Dave, about Tafunga, and there's eight seniors in total on this Utah defense that, that as I said, really don't care that it's Lavelle Edwards' last game. The right side of the screen is a deep linebacker, number 12. Coming out, he's going to break up. They're very difficult. Again, this isn't a defense that takes a lot of chances. What they are is they're in the right place at the right time. They cover their gaps. They trust each other that everybody can be in the right spot. That's the Funga's father, a fire dancer in Hawaii. And a cultural ambassador. Dolman rolling. Still rolling now, decides to keep it. And a foot race with Christensen who wraps him up at the 28. He might have waited too long to run. You're, you're absolutely right, Dave. He did wait too long to run. Again, he probably wants to set his tone in the pocket, but this is a situation Utah did a nice job cutting him off from rolling out. As soon as he started back the other way, he had an alley. He should have taken it. One thing I've learned from being up here is that those things sure are easy to see from the top it's of the field. It's amazing how easy it is Not up here. Not so easy when you're down there. Yeah, I don't remember being at this easy on the field. Well, here comes a 46-yard effort by Owen Potsman. Career-long 56-yarder, still record last week. Edmund Pahol for the left footer, who has plenty on it and is good. Senior from Mercer Island, Washington, Owen Potsman allows the Cougars to get three out of uh, by far their best drive here in the first quarter. Monday Night Football here on ESPN comes to you from Phoenix at 8.30 Eastern. The Giants take on the Cardinals. Our coverage begins with NFL primetime at 7.30. Diki Barber, Ron Dane, thunder and lightning for the Giants. They continue their march. They hope for an AFC, NFC East title. And on Monday Night Football, Packers and the Panthers from Charlotte at 9 Eastern. Can the Packers make it two unforgettable finishes in a row on Monday night? They can't if Barb has anything to say about it. The ESPN at ABC moves them home for primetime NFL. Certainly know when Brett Barr is on the field, you got a shot to win. But those are two teams, really, the Packers and Carolina, that I'm kind of mired in the middle of the pack this year, so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> I want to get back to that and how much you love running quarterbacks. I, I hated it as a player. I did. I used to watch you. You were lumbering around, oh. chasing you. Didn't see you Let me tell you what. You're just exuberant. Offensive linemen would rather block for a pocket passer, and defensive linemen would rather rush Wait a pocket minute. Pass. Don't stick to the um, offensive Oh, I know you guys. You guys aren't no athletic enough to slide no out. idea what an offensive lineman's life is like. Well, you're right, because I kept beating them all those get up there, oh. <laughs> rear end up in the air, and exploded off the ball. Uh, that's a home run. That's an epic blast by Mike. And a blast by Potsman for a touchback. Bill, it's early. You got three and a half quarters to think of your comeback. Did he say something coherent? Yeah, Dave wrote something down and handed it to him. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, they kicked off. <laughs> Lavelle Edwards and Ron McBride, good friends. They have gone head-to-head -head for 11 years. 
Edwards is 21 and 7 against the youth. But McBride has turned this into a real rivalry. He has split his 10 meeting, and lately he's dominated. He's won five of the last seven. He's produced for several goal winners, a top 10 team. Nothing on the ground here on the first down give. Adam Tate blasted by Hans Olsen. Hans Olsen of the famous Olsons. Merlin and Phil are his uncles. I think he's going to have his own nightly TV show when he finishes playing <laughs> football. He is hilarious. He's also a good football player and made a good first down stop there. Folks don't like second any Well, no, and, and this is a defense that's number two in the conference against the run, so they're, they're pretty stout. Again, that D-line is one of the biggest in BYU hits. Those corners are going to be tested big time today. Grant. Right, steps up and is sacked at the 14. The BYU defense rises up. Olsen with another tackle. Coaches are going to get that old line, that big hauled offensive line you were talking about, Mike, and, and, and get them back over there and say, look, if we're going to test these corners, we can't do it unless you protect. Hans Olsen's got penetration here. Chris Hope, number 58, has got penetration. And the quarterback never has a chance to set his feet. Young Lance Rice is getting an education in pass rush. I don't think he's seen anything like this until today. They lost three more yards. They get third and 15. Four wide. Rice in the shotgun. And fires deep over the middle. And a diving grab by Jordan Lee. Intercepted at the 33. You know, quite honestly, we've got two quarterbacks, not one, but two quarterbacks playing like they were lower on the depth chart at the beginning of the season. Both, both sides not making some good throws. That's just a bad throw by Lance Rice. Either a bad throw or a miscommunication on the route because I think the, the receiver cut his route off just a little bit short of where he should have been. Had he continued down the field, you see, he really wasn't running. Lyman was the target. Sataki... For about nine on first down of the 22, the point of making it seems every tackle for the new. Well, when you, you know you're not going to have winning records on either side. It's how well do you take advantage of turnovers that could define how your season ends today. Both these teams coming in with minus 10 turnover margin. Right and it's inexcusable for programs that have been this All successful. And you're exactly you right, right, Mike. It's nice to hear you get something right. Okay. Can you in the eye on second and one. And Staley is going to be very close up there. Hand 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 a little extra curricular. Broken up by Tom Robinson, the referee. Whatever it has been, quarter by quarter, is huge half-time deficit. And those are tough to overcome week in, week out. Put up a buck 25. But that's a second staggering quarterly statistic that early in the game and it usually means you're just being dominated by superior speed in today's football. Right now you can ski right front city by the way. this one by about two and a half inches, guys. Is that a prediction? Is that your final answer? I don't even need a lifeline. You're going to go for a million. Yeah. You don't want to call in your daughter, Sydney. She called me real quick and told me. Two inches in. in. I'm so sick and tired of being right. I'm going to be wrong just occasionally, just so I know I can do it. And it'll be pointed out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so proud of you, big man. Roman just two of six through the air. Andre Dawson running back his first pass today, 24 yards for the Utah score. But by the nose, literally first and ten from the 21 of the U. Little option, you know, associate this with BYU offense. Staley is going to be very close for another first down at the 11. Run out of bounds by Dyson. On ESPN at ESPN2 tomorrow, 11 Eastern on ESPN. Game day presented by Discover Card and then a new from Raleigh, Wake Forest, and North Carolina State. Freshman Fina Phillip Rivers leading the Wolfpack into this one of the ACC. 7.30 from Blacksburg, Virginia, and Virginia Tech. Right set on a BCS berth. Michael Vick will try and take them there. They're battling for the Commonwealth. Here they got nine. Outside the 11 on second down. 
This is Brian McDonald who breaks inside the five and it's first and goal Cougars from there. Their second leading rusher. McDonald brought down by Jason Kapuzic. That was a nice run, but Kautai Oliveo should have had he should have had the tackle. He's going to come up number 43. He's going to be on the bottom of your screen right here. You see him come up. He's got to make this play. He's right there. The cutback. He comes back. He's got to make the play. You're in position. Arm tackling. Not going to get it done. McDonald will stay in. He has scored his seven touchdowns on the year. Four and four and a half yards to carry. This is three here. First and goal. They'll try him again. Dillman stumbles as he gets it off. But he takes it in. Touchdown. BYU leads. Great job by the fullback, Kalani Sataki, who ran the ball well previously, but made a nice clearing block for his tailback there, and that's McDonald's first touchdown. He had another block a couple of plays ago on that option play at another big block. 245-pound senior. Eight touchdown, I stand corrected, and has scored before. Watchman, the all-time leading scorer. Had his 63rd consecutive PAT. Brian McDonald out of Buena Park, California. As Dobin stumbles, makes it home 10 7. It's your home at your heating and air. And presentation of primetime college football is brought to you by Dremel, tools for the imagination. And by Fred Meyer Jewelers and Litman Jewelers for all those special times. Cougars trail 7 to nothing, less than a minute into the game, and they storm back with 10 straight, take a lead with 442 in the quarter. McDonald took it over the final three. All set up by the interception by Jared Lee at the 31 of the youth. Patrick Dyson, seven yards deep. Well done. Body control, agility, and balance, critical for blockers as well as runners. The lead back, Sataki, 34, coming through the line, has to make a quick adjustment here, right here, to block on the middle linebacker. Nice job, turning, getting him turned inside to open it up for McDonald's touch. Certainly wouldn't happen if Dolman hadn't got the ball to him. This is an option quarterback right here, going down, but knows exactly where the ball is going to go. That's going to look good in a picture, I'll tell you that. I hope somebody snaps one of those. What a great job of concentrating, knowing where the ball had to get to a diving to get there. Maybe in Hunter and a tailback for the first time for Utah. And Rice goes down before he can assume his position in the pocket. What pocket? It yeah. collapsed before he could take his third step in the drop. Unfortunately, I'm an expert on what this, <laughs> what causes this. The center steps back, steps on his quarterback's foot. The quarterback doesn't move his foot quickly enough to get out of the way. And what you have to do as a coach is you blame it on both of them and tell them that better not happen again. And i tell you what the D-line does. You run and you try and get as close as you can to the quarterback before he goes down so you get yourself a sack. And then you dive on him. Absolutely. Head long. Minus nine to the yard. Second leading rusher behind Pate. Cousin of R.J. Sauer, number USC wide receiver. Justin Anna makes the tackle to be third and about seven. I actually think that's a pretty good call. Utah's got it. You, you just mentioned the yardage, Dave. Utah's got to try and establish the running game a little bit, even though that was second and long. Still, I think it was a good play. Got him a decent amount of yards back and let BYU know that, hey, we're still going to give that running game a shot. Another out of Rialto, California. Quarterback draw out of the shotgun. Wright reaches the 27 and goes backwards. He is met by Isaac Kelly first, a weak side linebacker. Coach McBride and the Utah uh, coaching staff is going to have to come out and start working on BYU's trouble area, which has been cornered all year long. The problem, admittedly, by Lavelle Edwards, which our corners have not played well. Utah has not really gone after them at all so far. Minus total yards, weapons first in the 42. Five mile an hour. Let's turn. Watch this one 
Bounce right to him at the 35. And he had already signaled for a catch. And a fight going on at the other end of the field. <laughs> C.R. Dwindle. And for Brigham Young. Bill Wright. Back up linebacker. Just getting to know each other a little bit. That's all. Well, everybody's watching the uh, the punt result and whether Turner's yeah, going to bring it back. All the action was about 40 yards back up field. The little battles within the war, sometimes the most fun to watch in a game. Well, they didn't draw a flag. Just raised a little blood pressure. So from the 36, first down, Brigham Young. Staley back into tailback. to Staley, wanted to go long, and an over-the-shoulder catch down to the 20-yard line. Goes Jonathan Pittman, their second leading receiver for 42 yards. One very clear thing about this young quarterback, not so young but in age, but young in experience, is that he throws the deep ball extremely well. Not so good at the crossing routes, but this is a beautiful throw on the post over the shoulder to Jonathan Pittman, who gets his man turned. Jeff Ray turns his shoulders. He's there to make Boy, the play. He is. Nice throw, nice concentration by Pittman. <laughs> Looks like BYU football, doesn't it? Pittman looks like a wrist going quarterback. These two best balls of the afternoon. That's the deep ball. Staley for no game. Brandon Dart comes up to make the hit on Staley. Tell you what's impressed me about Dolman, Bill, you just said it throwing the deep ball. We've seen him throw the short ball, not very accurate. He goes deep twice. One of the interference calls right there and there on the completion. It's a beautiful deep ball. What Lavelle said is he's really erratic in his accuracy. Right now, he's missed those easy right. crossing patterns, so they look easy to us. Right. The deep balls, he throws beautifully. Of course, he had a lot of yards last week. 349 yards, so he had some deep balls. BYU has had three different quarterbacks throw for 300 yards, which, as far as they can tell, is the first in the history of college football. Ed Engelman and Charlie Peterson. Dolman keeping. Great block. Gets him inside the 15. Still going. A marker down. He is at the 8. But the little two players are down there to sort out. It's 15 yards if the play stands. Oh, they're, they're going to get margin hooks on coming in low. When you block yeah. back toward the football, toward the you're football. exactly right yeah. again, Mike. When you block below the waist, that's illegal. When you come back like that, you're going to take on a big old linebacker. you got to hit him above the waist. And the, that's the Utah well, coaches yeah. are on the field. But, and I'm telling you what, and, and if I were one of the Utah coaches or players, I'd be on the field and I'd be in margin hook space right now because there is no need to go low on that hit. He could have cleaned him up high easily, and he took him down low. Let me tell you, this is a hit that can end careers. You That's can't do this. You can't do this. Also called uh, unsportsmanlike conduct. You're going to see him coming back. He's going to crack on Jason Potter. Go, no need to go low there. Potter wasn't even wasn't even looking. He could have easily stayed up high and caught him square in the chest, and he went down low. You can't you can't do that. You just cannot go low on a man like that. So Tom Robinson with the uh, penalty on hooks for the illegal block and then threw what would appear to be an unsportsmanlike flag on the youths for putting up their argument. And I'm going to tell you something. I've been in situations where there have been plays like this on the field. Martin Hooks better keep his head on a swivel for the rest of the game. Because somebody's going to come after him and take a shot on him. The official just brought Kalani Sataki to the sideline. I don't know if he's been ejected. There's been no signal. Here Illegal it is. block below the way against the offense. 15 yards from the spot of the foul. Dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct against the defense. Be second down. Now, the official incorrectly signaled both those penalties against yeah, BYU right. a moment ago. So it was Utah when the coaches came on the field. They got a 15-yard unsportsmanlike. And 
then the call that you uh, so vigorously described uh, and correctly. Yeah. You know, uh, even, if, Hook. even if you don't want to take and, and Potter is bigger than Hook. If, even if you don't want to take a big guy up like that, he's not looking. Just just jump in front of him if you don't want to throw your body into him. No, but there's right. no you need go to go ahead and hit him, up, hit him high. up high. That's football. But even if you don't want to want to do that, just just screen him then. But you can't go low on it. You can't go into in that situation. So Hook, man to watch now. Bottom of your picture, wide right. And the call at the line by Doman, and passed along by the new fullback, Will Snowden, who covers the Takashi. Second and five. And on a roll. He's back the other way, looks for a block. None there. Back at the 21 by Kaukai Olavau. Nice job of containment. You've got a quarterback that can run like Doman. The first thing you must do is pull him up. Get him started back inside. Jason Calfusi, number 86, the fine freshman pass rusher, is not just healthy skelter out there. He's playing responsibility, nice defense, and you see how these guys are number one in the country against the pass. Calfusi, one of six Calfusi brothers. I played with his brother Steve with the uh, Philadelphia Eagles. Now they're defensive end coach. He's position coach in fact. Roman all day. Fires for hit. And is that intercepted again by Dyson? They say no. That would have been his second. <laughs> See, Dyson gave it a shot. He stood up, raised the ball up, and the ref said no, and he wasn't even arguing that Well, way. you coach that. You <laughs> yeah. coach your DBs. If you think you've got a shot at the ball, you jump up off the ground, hold it up in the air. We all learned it from Dick Buckus, and it's amazing how often the official will believe you. Good call there. And he wallowed all over that yeah. thing, but watch him come up with it. <laughs> hey, man, I caught that thing. So on comes Costa this time from 39 yards. He'll hit from 35. And hit for a 6 point lead. And he's again got it. So BYU spends almost the entire first quarter to recover Andre Dyson's interception return for a touchdown. And they've had 13 points on the board. They have silenced. The sellout crowd at Rice Eccles Stadium. Go back a year ago, for nine games, BYU was eight and one. It looks like they might have another top ten team. They lost their final three, blown out by Marshall in the Motor City Bowl. They lost three of their first four this year. That finish in this beginning this year, the worst stretch ever in the 29 years under the Bell. And the thing that LaBelle says that surprised him so is that this team has practiced so well, Mike. And remember Lou Holt saying, i, I got to get them to play like they right. practice? Yep. And it really is a mystery to coaches at time. Well, they had uh, a schedule, the likes of which they've never played. Three trips east, off to Florida State, in Virginia in overtime, lost to the Syracuse. They have never won back-to-back -back games. That's the strangest part of this season. And they played six games before the end of September. But that schedule would kill a lot of people. <laughs> Plus, if you're flying back and forth all the time to the East Coast. If they came into this thinking, well, maybe we're finally playing our best football of the year. Utah certainly felt that. Well, they won their last season. They played all year with a team that dominated roster to where they are right now. Another touchback is taken down by Patrick Dyson with six seconds to go in the fourth. First time that these two have come in to this matchup, both with losing records. What BYU can avoid is just the second losing season for Edwards. His second year, 1973, they finished five and six. One year of 500 football to 93. They were six and six, and that's where they can finish this year. You try to imagine coaching for 29 years at one place and having one losing season the whole time. That, that's incredible. You try to imagine anybody coaching 29 years. Curious. <laughs> Damian Holloway popped that one up. Yeah, big scramble at the 20. He'll be changing hands even as we speak. Oh, it's getting nice and chippy out there, too. That's right in the middle of the field, too, where it's really get, turning into a mess on that field. And there's a lot of a lot of pushing and shoving going on in that pile down there. They may have been three or four take backs. Yeah. 
after the original fumble, and Tom Robinson will soon signal Brigham Young does recover. Man, that's the way the whole year has gone for Ron McBride. That's the way most of this first quarter has gone for the Bell Edwards. Justin Etta gets the recovery. Brian McDonald has their touchdown. They lead it after one, 13 to seven. the second quarter, Rice-Eccles Stadium, packed for BYU and Utah, with Phil Curry, Mike Goldick, and Michelle Tafoya, Dave Barnett, Salt Lake City. It is, uh, unbeknownst to him, 33 degrees and falling. It was snowing earlier today, and BYU with a 13-7 lead and a first down at the 20. Big to Staley, roll by Doman, fires to Hooks, and immediately hit by Dyson at the 13. Let's set it down on the shelf. Well, you guys have been talking, Dave, about how tough the field condition is in the middle of the hash marks. I've got a piece of turf, a divot that came up close to the sidelines, and this came up during pregame. Imagine what's going on during this game, particularly between the hash marks. There are constantly groundskeepers out there putting those divots back into place, but I'm not sure, Coach and Mike, whether this has affected anyone adversely to this point. Well, if they had Tom Maddie at game 200 yards, because he was slow. <laughs> Whistles prior to the snap. So let's bring about memories of Memorial Stadium, my old, Municipal Stadium. My old teammate for the Colts. Anytime we could go to Cleveland and get in the mud, nobody could tackle him. I'm telling you, this field, I was down there before the game. It's just like that stuff. Mark it off five yards against the Cougars. The numbers in the first quarter. One twenty-seven to three. Wow. Total yard. No first downs for you. Let me tell you how big having 13 points on the board for BYU is. They've scored just 30 points all year in the first quarter. In fact, in seven of their games, they have scored no points in the first quarter. So this, that's a huge quarter for them. But as we showed the four guys, it's the second quarter where they've given up 125 points in the second quarter. Keep an eye on this quarter and see if they can hold Utah down. There's on 24 plays to Utah's 10. They're coming after Delman. And he throws incomplete for Staley. He back paddles almost all the way to midfield. To try and get away from that pass rush. Almost every offense has a screen system. Doman shows good awareness of what screen football is all about. When you don't have it, where do you throw it, Michael? Right at the feet of your receiver. That way you can't get called for intentional grounding because he's still in the box. And you don't throw it to the other guy. I tell you, this could be a big play for, for Utah. This could be two times off turnovers if they can hold BYU to a field goal. That's what they're going to be chanting on Utah's sideline. That would be a couple of victories they think of holding the three-point attempt if they stop and win. Looks in the goal, a wide left on third and eight. Doman again backpedal and fires short for him. He looks good on the deep ball, but not much else. He just doesn't have that feel for the underneath stuff that comes from thousands and thousands of reps and Lavelle Edwards describes him as the all-time great kid great in the program but he has not had a lot of reps for these receivers throwing the underneath routes and it's very evident he's also hanging the ball up there a little bit even when he throws it over the middle the ball is hanging on him a little bit he's thrown off his back foot better be careful with another pick will try 35 yards for two on the day, and 17 out of 22 on the year. And for the Groza Award, which goes to the best kicker in football, and he's making a pretty strong case again this afternoon. Three for three, 16 straight points for the Cougars. Less than a minute gone in the second quarter, 16 to seven. Well, like any true rivalry, if you go back far enough, you'll find controversy about when this rivalry began. BYU says, don't count anything 1896 through the 20s. Utah says, no, we count every time we ever played, even if you had a high school player or not. 21 to 7 under Edwards, but 5 and 5 since McBride arrived in Utah, and 5 of the last 7, in fact, have gone to the East. And thus we have the capacity house and all the emotion, which is filled over with some play on the field. Yeah, and you talk about emotion that's spilled over. It certainly has. This truly is a rivalry and a lot of emotion 
right now. Getting a little chippy on the field. Everyone getting in everybody's face, trying to throw a little punching in the face. Oh, yeah. Just getting to know. You hear these guys exchanging addresses for Christmas cards. And then this just flat out a bad block by Hooks. You can't do this and go low. Like I said before, he better have his head on a swivel because there are going to be some Utah players that are going to go after him. He's, this is a, 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 one of those... One of those games where no love loss is the, is the term, I guess. Bring back memories. Oh, let me tell you what. Big time rivalry, you're going to find yourself in situations like that. You either get intimidated or you answer. Absolutely right, Coach. That's been a good job. Looking at a possible return kick. Patrick Dalton, the brother of Andre, was going to win the lead three. College basketball, when we're done, 9 Eastern, the Evo preseason and IT championship game, Madison Square Garden, number one Duke, number 25, Temple. All everything Shane Battier leading the Blue Devils against John Shady Fowles. And at midnight, the Great Alaska Shootout semifinal matching Ohio State and Syracuse from Anchorage. Boys went flying high after their upset of number 20, the Colts. Rice trying to get something going offensively. He starts with a little hit for short yardage. Steve Smith, the senior from L.A., makes the catch. And that's the first time yep. today that we've seen Utah come out and exploit BYU's most obvious weakness. So if finally in the second quarter they're going to go after the corners, a simple hitch, what do you got? Second and two. Nice call. It's about time. I think Utah's going to keep it pretty simple here. Three, three yards in the first quarter. It means you need to get back to basics a little bit. Bill, as you said, try and exploit the other team's weakness. And I think they're going to keep it simple here and try and do that. They should run the ball and make the first down here and then go right back to work on those corners. He goes to run instead. And right wrapped up. Before he can get rid of it, he sacked at the 22 by Isaac Kelly. Bill, I cannot agree with you more. You, you, you're struggling in the first quarter. Get the first down, move the stick, get your offense going. They haven't done it now. Now they're trying They're trying a little bit of a trick play there on a second down and two. There is nothing that calms young quarterbacks down like first downs. You got second and short. Here comes Kelly. Sack now. Now you got third and nine. Nobody likes third and nine. Everybody likes first and ten. Third and nine means four wides on the shotgun. Right. With time, Pat Chris Christensen with one man to beat. And that one man is Michael Lafitte. He wraps him up at the 50, but finally Utah's offense kills up. 26 yards. Nice answer by Lance Rice to the situation that he was given after the sack with a beautiful throw. Good poise in the pocket. A nice throw over the middle against the zone. Nice concentration on the football. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That takes a little grip. Catch that football. Get it turned up. First down. So there are good plays on third and nine. After all, yeah, they found one. Down there. <laughs> Chris Christensen did a job when he went up and caught that thing, too. A walk on. His final game is year out of three. Leading receiver for the year. All right. Get Steve Smith out of the backfield, puts him out wide, takes his spot the shotgun. And goes deep, hit it again, two deep. It was one for Cliff Russell. Yes, indeed, and guess who was beat? Uh, Michael Lafitte. And this is about the fourth combination of corners that BYU has tried. Staley and Lafitte starting today. They're little guys, and they're having a hard time. They don't run as well as these big guys, and they've run right by them. All he's got to do is connect, and that's an easy six points. Against the Cougar pass defense, 60%, 14 yards per catch, 16 touchdown passes. Thought the side judge may be an alignment problem. Yep, defense aligned wrong. <laughs> I can feel the pain. LSU and Arkansas should be wrapped up by now. What happened, Reese Day? Well, Dave, you guys have seen Josh Booty play outstanding football a couple times, thrown for over a thousand yards in the last four games, and only three picks. Of course, there's another one by Quentin Caver. Terrible day for Booty. Throw for less, threw for less than 100 yards. Arkansas wins 14.
So Arkansas with a big finish to a disappointing year. They knock off Mississippi State and LSU in their final two games. Oh, eligible at six and five. It'll be third and one for the youth. They were 16 to 7. Nice as numbers, including a pick by Jared Lee. Hosted by Scott Price. And Rice wanted a huge deep for Smith. In single coverage, it is broken up by Dustin Staley. How about that ball in third and one? I like it. Good call. Trying to go after the weakness of the opposition, and Staley answers with a fine play. He's running stride for stride with the Speedy Smith, and I do mean Speedy Smith's one of the most exciting players I've seen. Got him on his outside hip, reaches up with his right hand, tips the ball away. He's making a statement, hey, I can cover this guy. You keep trying me out. And the nice only, job. And the only reason I like the call is because they were going to go for it, obviously. If they were going to run a play like that on third and one, that means... They should go for it on fourth and one. First, though, we're going to talk it over a little bit with their first timeout. 12.06, second quarter, BYU up 16-7 with Utah Drivers. What a setting as uh, the sun sets in the Wasatch Mountains, Salt Lake City, Rice Eccles Stadium. Golden Wetman on the kick after the unsuccessful deep pass on third and one. Decided not to go for it from the 41 of Brigham Young. And handled a bit behind net tries to kill this one inside the five and they can't quite get to it so after all that they're going to net 21 yards on the punt yeah i, I just completely disagree with that call if you're going to go for it on third and one with, with the bomb like that you got to be ready to go for it on fourth and one and not punt it away if, if not then you just got to run the ball and try and move your stick I, I disagree with that david you said they just net 20 yards there i, I think that was a, a bad mistake on utah's part Utah automatically think if they throw deep yeah. on that third down, that obviously they're considering yeah. it four down territory. And, and they did have the offense out there. They were going to run a play. Then they end up calling a timeout and punting it. Uh, yeah, that, that's, that's exactly right. In that situation, you would think they were going to go for They heard you say you'd go for it, and that's when they went and punted. <laughs> <laughs> so that comes Doman on the Cougar offense. They get Staley wide. Kimball Christensen will wrap it up after a pickup of five at the 25-yard line. Kimball's twin brother Howard unable to play this year. Season-ending knee injury late last year, unable to come back. Identical twins. Both their parents, however, attended BYU. And two brothers played football for the Cougars. It's not that unusual to see Kimball players on one side yeah. of the other. Right. Relative to the other side. We talked about the Fousies. There's six brothers in all. Two went to BYU, and then four went to uh, Utah. But Kimball and Howard talked about the brothers. They're on the bench school next year, so I'll be doing all right. Out of the eye on seven and five. Oh, to keep. Driven out of bounds by Marcus Jones. Just shy of the first down. Well, without question, the signature win for Lavelle Edwards, the 84 Holiday Bowl, trailing 17-10 fourth quarter. Bosco to Glenn Kozlowski to tie the game against Michigan. Then with a minute 23 left, he hits Kelly Smith for the lead. Michigan's Chris Zerbrug with under a minute to go, picked off by Marv Allen. BYU wins to secure its national championship, 24-17. The only undefeated. Nowadays, it wouldn't work that way. You can't get a national champion outside the parameters of the BCS. So a memorable year and a memorable career. 1984 for the Red 11. Doman with all day finally gets it off, and Pittman makes the catch and should have the first at the 32. He also finally made a touch throw right. across the middle. Those are the ones he's been throwing behind the receivers time and again. I don't know if that's just a mental clock thing that he gets together after a period of time of experience here in the football game. He shows good presence in the pocket. He understands he's got plenty of time, and he just sticks it in there nicely for the first. Get some credit to the O-line there. Great protection. What? Yeah, what you said say? it. I said it. <laughs> Take a more year. Thank you. I said it. You finally heard it. Give me five bucks. Roman keeps on the action and ridden down by Tofunga. <laughs> well, 
Well, for Lavelle Edwards and uh, the history that he has had, which has included four top tens, 13 top 25s, he was able to take them all the way in 1984 and has had some near misses since a couple of years ago, had a 14 win team. But uh, the way things are set up right now, the BCS is getting out at a point where it's, it's really impossible when you, when you really look at the overall picture for a team like BYU. What he's done, where he did it, would have been considered literally impossible. That He's aged like an old waterfall. I mean, he just gets better and smarter as he's gone along. To win 14 games and lose only one in the 90s, remarkable. You're at BYU. You're not at Oklahoma or Alabama. And, and I think his consistency in sticking with his plan, which is to throw the football better than anybody else, and also to play great defense for the most part, Mike, is the reason that he's done so well. And, and Dave, and to go to on the other side of that, I agree with you, it's difficult now for those BYU teams to have made it in the way the BCS works nowadays with the schedule and everything. He would not have had the rankings that he's had. In and the conference of the year. Yes, the Fungo was injured and helped off the field for Utah on second and ten. Bowman again rolling off the play. Big looks up. There's an open man. Opa Hungawi, the tight end. And he may have lost it at the end of the carry to the 43 yard line. Brigham Young still feeling that they have recovered it at 25 yards, and it is still BYU ball. Well, the, the key there was the fake. Completely sucked in the outside of the Utah defense, was able to get the corner. They do not want this guy getting on the corner. And that's exactly what he's done. Watch the fake. There's the fake right there. It's drawing Kafusi in. He pulls the ball out. He's got the corner all to himself. That is where he is most dangerous, and he looks a lot more comfortable about throwing on the run than he does in the pocket. He sure does. And the instant Kafusi's shoulders turn perpendicular yep. to the line of scrimmage, Doman was too fast. He got outside, made a nice throw. Now he's got to get his tight end over Hungawi to put that ball away and not sling it around. Perpendicular turns it. Turns sideways. All right. Thanks. So beat him. Got it. Yeah. He's to celebrate his ninth wedding anniversary. He four kids already. Doman never saw Arnold Parker. He blitzed in untouched. Parker had two sacks in their last game two weeks ago at Wyoming. Here's his fourth sack of the year. Arnold Parker's listed as a starter. He's coming from right here in the bottom right of your screen. And it's the equivalent of a corner blitz. And the young quarterback doesn't see it. The guy that should have seen it, yep, Brian, McDonald. Brian McDonald, and picked it up, could have prevented that happening. Nice play by the nickelback, Arnold Parker. Yeah, and he got the gift from McDonald because McDonald easily should have should have looked out there and picked up that blitz. He stepped up. McDonald had an inside out lead. He got locked in on the linebacker and didn't look to the corner. And boy, does that change things. Now second and 19, and they bear down on Dillman, flush him out, throws it short. Sataki has some room. Gets away from Olavao. Still going. Out of bounds, 28-yard line. That that's a fullback right there, and you're getting a late flag as well, but that's a fullback. Rarely will you ever see a fullback run for the sideline. You see him get the catch on the outside. Good job of Doman getting outside again. That's where he's most dangerous. In fact, he wants no part of the sideline. Look, he'll spin and come back in just to try and run somebody over. I'll go after somebody. Keep driving his legs, and you're going to get the flag here late. Right there. Tafunga gets the hit about three yards out of bounds. And we've already seen some little bit of non-love on the field, so the refs are certainly going to keep an eye on any extracurriculars. Personal foul. Defense. They hit out of bounds. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Not that there's a lot of love on the field, but... You know. You started all this. I'm just going to leave you hanging out there with your non-love. Here is where I'm not help here you. is where I cannot partner. help you. Uh, there's a lot of non-love. Can we go down out to out Michelle? There? Will Michelle yeah. help me out here? Will somebody Michelle, help me out. Mike, there's non-love non -love up here too. Please. Beware. Please, somebody. One thing we agree on is that Kalani Sataki is a heck of an athlete. Beautiful balance as a blocker and now as a runner. Mr. Sataki taking a 175-pound Andre Dyson. For a ride, and then Tofunga taps on the penalty. 
Option pitch, Staley cuts it back inside the 10 to the 8. And look at BYU running options. <laughs> Unless you think Lavelle's not really smart, he remembers what this guy does in high school. Bobby Dodd, my coach, also a legendary coach, said, remember what the guy did in high school. That's perfect execution on the option. And Mike, he got the defender's shoulders turned perpendicular to the line of scrimmage, and then he pitched the ball. That's perfect execution. And Utah's playing it quick and forcing the fast pitch, and if they're going to do that, their DBs have got to roll over a little bit quicker to make the play. On the delay, Brian McDonald will be close to the first down, not quite there. We check it on another rivalry, Arizona, Arizona State. He stayed. Dave, not much point in Bruce Snyder leaving anything in the playbook for this one. Lining up for a field goal and trickeration. Griffin Goodman gave it to Mike Barth. Goes into the end zone, 13 yards out. Arizona up by three. He goes like every other Arizona State game. Headed to overtime. <laughs> trickeration, that's a Tom Archer move. Our, our producer loves that game. Trickeration. It's for sure. Less than one muted, just inside the fire, we get a first and goal, and keeping, lowering his head, the shoulders, driving the legs all the way to the two, is Doman, and it is first and goal there. So one thing I'll say we've done this year, we've broken down quarterback sneaks. There's we a way to run a quarterback down, sneak. Yes, <laughs> and you know, this is one thing we agree on, a quarterback that gets his shoulder pads down and slides along the line of scrimmage, not allowing the linebackers or big hogs to butt him in the sternum, is going to make the play. Damon Flat knows how to run a QB sneak. And they had good movement, too. This March... Reaching the 11th play, 78 yards they've already covered. The most important two still to come. They can really make it tough on Utah. They had a touchdown with an point lead here. Again, stumbles as he gets it off. Staley has a hard time picking that one up, and that is a disaster. What is it with Delman and the footing when they get down near the goal line? Well, uh, you wonder, we, when we were down there, and, and Michelle talked about it, the middle of that field is mud, spray-painted green, and you wonder if he's having trouble there, not getting his feet back in time when he turns. There's divots everywhere, and every break, they're coming out and filling in the divots. Nope. Can't this is the center's yeah. feet. Jason Skukanik, number 68, and Doman, the quarterback, have not got their footwork down. That's one of the things that's so delicate and so important that defensive people like you don't understand, Mike. You've got to learn to get your footwork down between the center and the quarterback. And Skukanik just stepped on his foot. He's got to get his foot out of the way. Skukanik cannot step backwards. It's really that simple. It's happened to both teams today. So far, so good inside the red zone. This will be second and goal coming after a timeout called by the Cougars. 6.20 to go in the half. They already lead 16 to 7 and looking for more from the bell. 16 to 7 and Brigham Young poised to add to that nine point lead. Second and goal coming from their 10 yard line after their timeout to talk things over. They have six minutes and 20 seconds to go. And they send three receivers to the right side. Pittman, Ben Horton, and Margin Hooks. First, a conversation between the side judge, Kent Payne, and Tom Robinson, the referee, and now set to go. The talking in the backfield, hit with in motion. And Doma steps up, sees it open up, and then flows at the five. Arnold Parker, who already has a sack on this series, drives him down at the five, third and goal from there. Pretty smart play, getting the motion man to take the linebacker out of there and running the quarterback draw. We've seen BYU had this drive really, guys, in not BYU fashion. We've seen options. We've seen the quarterback out in the corner throwing the ball. It's not normally what you see out of a BYU offense, but, you know, you, you play with the talent you have, the way, they're, the way their talent is geared. I think that's uh, exactly right, and I think they're going to be very conservative down here and get points on the board off this long drive. It's a morale factor. Well, it is along with the 13th play of the drive coming up. All three of their tight ends are in the game. Goldman play pick. Pump pick. Will keep and Becker at the five. Right back. All about. Boy, he specializes 
in thumping BYU runners. If you watch that quarterback, Doman, jump up off the ground. Calte is all man, and he unloads on him. Calte says this football is not very tough. Oh, I worked on the farm. My dad worked me so hard with those papayas. This football is easy. But Doman jumped up, clapping his hands, knowing that they got a good shot at points here. And they should get it. But they didn't spit a couple of teeth out, too. He doesn't care. They again have to settle for three. They hope Eichmann has not missed yet. He's a 23-yarder, and he is still perfect. 19-7, BYU. But Doman will not soon forget what Olavau just laid on him. It's the grand opening of Car Stereo City's... ESPN's presentation of primetime college football is brought to you by Tostitos. Dig in, kick back, stay all season. And by Buick and your local Buick dealers. Boy, that's got to feel great until you get out. <laughs> it does feel funny. You better have a good road when you get out. I know it's Michelle down on the sideline. I think she should really get into this game and maybe well, pop in this top You know, come to think of it, we haven't heard from Michelle in a while. Patrick Dyson from the one. Leads again into the obvious passing situation, third and seven. Get that many third down, but here they get Christensen loose over the middle. And he may go. Dustin Staley with an angle gets him at the 25. 56 yards right to Christensen. We have mentioned that the corners for BYU are vulnerable. The safeties this time exploited Jared Lee on the coverage. They force him into man coverage. He falls behind Christensen and Christensen down the sideline, cutting it wisely to the outside down to the 25-yard line. And that's the kind of thing that Utah must do to get back in this game. Bill, their total yardage was 42 yards before this one goes 56. Well, they just got to keep giving this kid a chance because he's going to hit a few of them, and they can make big games. Back to the ground, Jay. Kate. Tries to get around the left corner and can't get away from the talented freshman from Highland, Utah, Paul Walkenhorst. Still there in a, in a good time right now to keep with the system, the short passes like that that can break off into the big ones and also keep the running game going. No sense of panic yet, 19-7. So we'll have plenty of time to go as we have a player down. That's it is Tate, Tate who just ran the ball. Was a good tackle by Walkenhorst, no doubt about it. But they can stay in their system right now. Utah doesn't have to. There's, there's no sense of panic right now. They don't need to. But they do need to keep the safe passes going with Rice because he certainly is struggling for passes really over 10 yards. Well, we'll see what happens yep. at the end of that run by Tate. He got kind of hog tied there right in the back of the neck and pulled down. A lot of times when that happens, your leg gets bent like that. You see his right leg. Oh, that's so scary. Yeah. You hate to even see it, especially if it's ever happened to you. But when you go down, this can happen whether you're a running back or a lineman or a linebacker, and that thing bends up underneath you. A lot of things could happen, and none of them good. You just have to hope that it's minor. Take the outstanding running back that his coach, that whose coaches feel he can be as good as Mike Anderson, the great back uh, at Denver. You can check in on Arizona, Arizona State with Reese Davis. It's going back and forth. Dave Ortiz Jenkins says it's not in his blood to lose to the Sun Devils looking for Manu Malanua, and he found him all by himself, 14 yards out. Wildcats had it going. Things would not go as well here. Clarence Farmer never gets the exchange. Terrell Suggs gets it. Sun Devils up three. You keep it on the ground here. Damian Hunter finds no room around the right corner. It's walking horse again. He's got both corners covered. And this is a big kid, 230 pounds. True freshman. The older guys would talk about him. Uh, Satema Nali and, uh, and Hans Olsen saying when this guy stepped onto the field, he was a little wide-eyed in the beginning, but he came along so quickly that the, the coaches couldn't help but get him in the game. They said he stepped on the field a man. Brigham Young lost a couple linebackers early in the season for the year. Jeff Poultry with a knee. Josh Lowe with a knee. Walking horse for the knee. 
promoted perhaps to a starting job earlier than they planned, but he's been equal to the task. Third and five for Rice. Down in the arms of Ryan Denny. Uh, and, you know, and, and that one's Rice's fault. He's got the middle open. He's got to step up and make something happen. He's got to step up, make the throw, or he's got to take off with the ball. It's a young quarterback, inexperienced quarterback, holding on to the ball too long. So Ron McBride has to hope for three. Remember, they scored on the Andre Dyson interception in the first minute of the game in the last few minutes of the first half, and they still haven't scored, but on for a 39-yard effort is right kind of field. They have really struggled with field goals this year. Not very good efforts. We will call this an even 40. Four out of six on the year for kind of hero, and no problem with this one. You try to get something out of the drive, they get three. 19-10 BYU. With 1-800-COLLECT, you save a buck or two. So why doesn't everyone use it? It's so simple. <laughs> you use 1-800-COLLECT to make that call, right? Oh, I, I forgot. Forgot? You forgot. 1-800-COLLECT. Collect call is so simple. Well, I've been up all night studying, man. Well, we're just studying all night. <laughs> it's like the number is 1-800-COLLECT, OK? Write it down. It'll save you big bucks. Have you heard of paper? Uh, yeah. 1-800-COLLECT. Save a buck or two. 1910 BYU. They have won four of their last five here in Salt Lake City, including the last two. Strange rivalry of late. Road team has won four in a row. The road team has controlled this first half. Golden Wetman's kick. David Christensen decides to down it. And let's see what's ahead of the Buick halftime report with Reese Davis. All right, Dave, coming up at the half, the Huskers had yet another tussle with Colorado, trying to keep their BCS hopes alive. Showdown in Texas between the Longhorns and the Aggies. And we'll look ahead to all the showdowns on Saturday and see how it'll shake out for the BCS. Coming up in a few. If you didn't see how that Nebraska-Colorado game went back and forth and back again in the last two minutes, they were just for that. It was in front of for the Cougars. 80 yards to travel. Bowman going deep. Intended for Pittman and complete. Jeff Ray had the coverage. On ESPN Classic Sports Century, the top 50 and beyond tonight at 8 Eastern, a look at the criminal trial and how race and celebrity factored into the verdict of O.J. Simpson. Learn how Simpson, both on and off the field, transcended race during the turbulent 60s. Interviews with F. Lee Bailey and L.A. Detective Tom Lang. That is 8 Eastern on ESPN Classic tonight. To order ESPN Classic, dial 1-800-CLASSIC or call your cable provider. Minute 28. Roman through the year, 7 of 15 for 125 in the interception, producing the Utah touchdown. Then carries 27 yards on the ground. Didn't want to have to keep that one. He'll lose a yard. Ma'ake Kemoyatu from Kahuku, Hawaii, brought him down. Well, I, I tell you what, Utah needs to worry, needs to worry thinking about calling a timeout here. They have two left. They can get the ball in decent field position. And try and at least put another three on the board. And they finally do call a timeout. Good push up the middle. By the nose tackle. Just shoving them straight back. Quarterbacks hate pressure in their face. They can't, the pressure in their face, they can't step up in anything. And Doman has done a better job when he's gotten out in the corner. So to have him in the pocket and see guys coming in his face, very, very difficult. So Utah with a minute 12, and they have one more timeout. That's assuming they take care of business on the third and 11. Let's send it down to Michelle Tafoya. Well, Dave, Utah would like nothing better than to get the ball back before heading into the locker room at halftime. The offensive line coach, Don X, 
was praising his offensive line. He said that protection was beautiful on their last drive. And just the score of the field goal really energized that bench. Don Eck telling his offensive line, this game is now ours. Let's get back out there. They hope to be able to do that before halftime, Dave. It's theirs, but they trail by nine, Bill? Yes, and Don Eck is also in guarded language saying to his men, just remember, Ron McBride will take you over if you don't continue to play well. He did that a couple of games ago. The head coach just said, I'm taking the offensive line. And they said he got in our face and he unloaded on us every time we came off. So I think it's very clear that the head coach will also get involved if necessary. The stop on third and 11. Three out of seven on third down for BYU. Delvin Chase can't get rid of it. Runs out of bounds. At that time, good job on Kamoyu by Jason Sukanik. The center picked up the big guy well, but they didn't block the... Dead um, ball. False start. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Remains third down. Of course, they moved early, but they also couldn't block West Tufango, who came off the corner. Nice job in the middle that time. Well, two schools of thought right now for BYU. If you're going to go for the first down, that's one thing. Go for the first down. If you're not, make it a play that's going to make Utah burn their last time out. Said what they did there. Stop the clock out of bounds. Yeah. And that's something Dolman certainly would need to learn if he would he would in the future want to slide in a situation like that. Keep the keep the clock running when you know it's gonna be third. Force Utah to call that timeout unless they are gonna try and get something down the field. I'm surprised they accepted the penalty though. I guess maybe they moved. Well it was yeah, it was a dead ball. They did move before. Didn't have a choice. Didn't have a choice. Yeah. They make it third and sixteen. Draw. Down at the 18, Garrett Smith, who leads the Utes in sacks, almost got him behind the line. May have a face mask, and other marker is down. Yeah, yeah you're definitely going to get a face mask here, Dave. You're absolutely right. Utah had him stopped. The big one. That's it. BYU's going to get the first down out of this now. This is a perfect call. This guy's coach is crazy, Mike. The perfect call. He's inspired. How does that feel when you're that guy? You're right there. You're there to make the play. Grab it and twist it. That's why it's a personal foul. If your hand just goes on it and then you let go right away, they'll call the five-yarder. But when you grab it and twist the head like that, that's going to be the big one. He was in a spy situation. Kyle Whittingham, defensive coordinator, called it just for that very play. All he's got to do is move over there and grab something, shirt, anything other than the face man. Well, the spy was a defensive tackle, so I don't know if he can get over there as quickly. You told me <laughs> defensive tackles were the best athletes on the field. Yeah, I said best athlete. I didn't say anything about that. So, <laughs> so first and ten, BYU. I was played at BYU, one of the top defenders ever on the other side of that rivalry. Sataki run down from behind Olaval and Jason Kalfuzi. Well, they're going to miss Kautai Olaval, two-time all-conference. His cousin is Opa Hungawi, the BYU tight end. He's been calling up for tickets this week. <laughs> Surely he told him no go. Well, well, man, you know. remember me, old third cousin? Yeah, those are the calls you get during rivalry week. I really think... Kamoyatu is a great run stopper, too, and getting that pressure up the middle. There are a lot of good players on this Utah defense that are seniors. It's 260 pounds. There's a linebacker as well. Mm. Well, now Green is playing for BYU. The Utah for an immediate playing time. That's why he ended up in Salt Lake. Whoa. <laughs> Garrett Smith stoned everybody on that play. He made a statement for the second half. He just whipped everybody and made the play. First half ends on a hopeful note for the Utah defense, one of the best in the country. But Lavelle Edwards has a nine-point lead on the scoreboard, 19-10 in his final game on the BYU sideline. We send you to the studio and restate. Guys, thanks. A lot of entertaining first half. Lavelle Edwards in his finale. Obviously, the second half, guys, you would anticipate being even more emotional, especially for the Cougar players. Yeah, you know, it's a little bit surprising to see the BYU defense play that well. Well, maybe not that surprising, considering that Lavelle Edwards was a defensive coordinator 
although he gets a lot of credit for the offensive system there. BYU, I think their defense is very strong tonight, Coach. And Utah's defense is so strong, we actually are seeing more points than we might have expected in this game. And speaking of emotion, I guarantee you that in the second half, old Lavelle Edwards' heart is going to be beaten quite heavily as the game ticks down. You there, wait and see. there were some hearts beating a little quickly in Lincoln, Nebraska this afternoon. Nebraska and Colorado went right down to the wire, as they seem to always do. Eric Krauts trying to save his team. And what do you want on your tombstone? D.D. Lewis said he would fall every week. It is astonishing when you stop and think about it. And just one time in the last 28 years has Nebraska lost to a team that finished the season with a losing record. Hadn't happened in Lincoln since 1968. Colorado hadn't beaten Nebraska since 1990, but the last four had been decided by a grand total of 13 points. Second quarter, Huskers up by four. Cortland Johnson. Nebraska's defense not participating in the tackling portion of the highlight. Buck 55 for Cortland. Nebraska blocked a couple of field goals on the day. Coach. Watch the wing back on the right side. He didn't use the double bump, the ricochet technique. He was out, man. So that left is tied at 24 on a third and eight play. The Nebraska offense going to Eric Crouch, who went for 125 yards on the day, 26 here. You got to take the ball out of his hands. Colorado didn't do it, didn't get off blocks and he made him pay for it. 31-24 Nebraska in the fourth quarter. The freshman, Craig Oaks, looking for John Minardi. Touchdown, bumped with M1. Barnett decides to go for two. Good idea, John? Great idea. You're on the road, and plus his quarterback was hot. Devon Green holding on to the Oaks pass, and with that grip, he thought he had Nebraska beaten. On the kickoff, they tried to squib it, didn't hit it very well, and now Nebraska's in business with great field position over their own 40, and then Crouch going to work. Looking for Bobby Newcomb. A dart gets out of bounds, stops the clock. Five seconds to go. Josh Brown, Tommy Clether. High enough, yes. Long enough and straight enough. Brown just three of seven on the season said he was thinking, don't yank it, don't yank it, and he didn't. 34-32, more heartbreak for Colorado. 32 straight seasons, the Huskers have won at least nine games. And Nebraska stays in the hunt for an at-large berth in the BCS. They don't get there, they'll wind up in the Cotton Bowl, likely. Texas A&M and Texas, third quarter, Longhorns leading by three. Little end around to the fabulous freshman, Roy Williams. Roy is logged on and he is part of the Gone Network. 40 yards in the horn of 17-7. It's 24-14 in the third. Chris Sims for Sloan Thomas. And Sloan Thomas, again, another receiver helping out Chris Sims. They made play after play after catching the ball. Big time. Speaking of freshman receivers, how about B.J. Johnson? 70 yards on the touch here, 187 yards receiving. That breaks the freshman receiving record for Texas set earlier this year by Roy Williams. Sims, though, by the way, throws for 234 yards in the third quarter. Well over 300, pushing 400 on the day. 43-17, the final. The most points the Longhorns have scored against A&M since 1996. They scored 51. Anybody remember who coached the Horns then? Oh, how about John Max? Some guy on TV. Uh, you know, that's what happens to them. They all turn into TV guys after they put the big points on the board. Texas is 9-2, likely headed to the Holiday Bowl. And the SEC, LSU and Arkansas. LSU and designs on the Cotton Bowl. Wait and see how that plays out. Josh Booty. Didn't get a lot of help from his receivers. Didn't help himself yeah, much in that just, play either. Didn't even see him. He threw it right to him. Reese. Quentin Caver going the other way. 33 yards. Booty threw a couple of picks on the day. Only threw for 65 yards. And Arkansas returns a favor from last year when LSU beat them in the regular season finale. 14-3 the final. Bayou Bengal offense, which had been powerful recently, absolutely shut down. But let's get back to that Nebraska-Colorado thing. A, a thrilling finish again. Now, the last five games have been decided by 15 points. Colorado coming up on the losing end. And really did, they, it came up on the losing end oh. in this one. Oh, absolutely. I think Colorado lost this game as much as Nebraska won it. You take a look at that last drive. Your pass defense, you have to know you've got to protect the sidelines. They had only, only one timeout, forced them to throw the ball inside. Now, don't confuse Eric Crouch and his really destroyed it statistically, so they're, they're still right in it. And we'll see uh, if there is an emotional advantage either way. The obvious emotion involving Edwards' final game for BYU, but it is a home game, and for Utah, they uh, feel they have been a much more talented team than their record has shown, four and six coming in. So they don't want to finish at home losing to their arch rival.
Patrick Dyson takes it for a touchback. We take it down below to Michelle Tafoy. Well, Dave, I got to spend halftime with Lavelle, his last halftime in the locker room. A fiery locker room. The team was very fired up. But talk about business as usual from Lavelle Edwards. He looked at his team and he said, defense, if we don't let them score, they don't win. We've been a good second half team all season. Everybody win on three. He counted to three. They all shouted win. That was it. That was Lavelle Edwards' last halftime speech, Dave. Utah gets two first downs at 100 yards in the first half. They start the second half with a very poor pass from Rice intended for Cliff Russell. Bill, I was a little bit surprised by the fact that there was no real talk in that locker room from either the players or the coaches about this being Edwards' last game. You? The absolute hallmark of Lavelle Edwards has been consistency. So even though it would be surprising to you and me, and I'll tell you, Michelle, I'm envious. I wish I'd been in there. I would have been surprised if he had changed anything. He is Lavelle Edwards, and that's one of the reasons that he's done so well. Offset eye and a run on second down for Damian Hunter. Negative two yards on his two first half carries and was injured late in the first half, so the numbers at intermission skewed toward the Cougars. 12 to 2, first downs, 195 to 100 total yards. And the turnover was costly. It uh, yeah. was returned for a touchdown by Dice. And it can't be much simpler than what Lavelle Edwards said. I mean, you hear this all the way down to Pop Warner. If you're winning at halftime, hey, defense, don't let him score and you win. Pretty simple. He figured it out. Yeah. The key. Third down time for Rice. Floated. Christensen brings it in. He's got a first down at the 36. When Rice has thrown it well, Christensen has usually been the target. This one goes 14 yards. <laughs> that was a dangerous pass. <clears throat> Christensen has done a wonderful job. He's not been one of the Valley League receivers, but he's the inside slot guy coming across the middle right into heavy traffic, and the ball slightly lofted. He just went yeah. up and took it away from the defense. I'm not sure that the coaches will be real happy with that throw. It's no. just the result. Christensen has been the man tonight. That ball batted down at the line of scrimmage by Olsen. <laughs> Mike, we've heard so much about Russell and Smith. I mean, they really are big league prospects. And here, Christensen, the guy, has just sort of taken over the game uh, in terms of getting some kind of offense for his team. Going up and making those catches, because the point you're making, I completely agree with. The coaches aren't going to be happy the way the way uh, uh, the ball is being thrown by Lance right now. I mean, the balls are floating over the middle of the field, but Christensen, he's going up and he's getting the ball. The guy you normally wonder about right there is Steve Smith, a non-factor so far. One catch for one yard. Damian Hunter across the 45 and just about a yard shot for the first down for the youth. Isaac Kelly there for the tackle. So many times it's a platitude. Every analyst that does football says, well, the first five minutes of the third quarter, the most important part of the game. Sometimes it is, and sometimes it isn't. But if you got two first downs at the half, and you come right out, and you march down the field with a series of first downs and get points on the board, then it means an awful lot. And this is a very important third and short here for Utah. I guarantee it won't be a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> First half, anyway. It isn't. It's Hunter off tackle. And he may have it, but they may have to measure it. Okay, Mike, tell yeah, us. He's got it. By how much? He's, I would say, let me see the mark. How many inches? He's got this one. I think. You can't no, they, oh, they gave him the first down. They, they, they just knew, heard me saying it up there. He's got it. You didn't say nothing. Oh, I said he's got it. I said he's got no, it. I don't, I don't think so. I'll check the tape. <laughs> I want an instant replay. I'm throwing my red flag up. You want a recount? <laughs> no, please. <laughs> Near the 48. Right. Over the middle. Matt Nichols separated from the ball by Tyson Smith, the strong safety. And we see Tyson Smith a couple of times tonight. Once got beat over the middle, misplayed a ball, just made a tackle a little bit ago in front of him. This time, he read the play all the way. I mean, there's nothing fancy about this. They know Lance isn't going to go too deep. Smith just sits back there, and he's reading the quarterback. Lance isn't really looking at a lot of different receivers, so he's just going to come up and try and hit him as hard as he can, put the shoulder right in his chest and separates the ball from the man. It's a nice hit. BYU. 
Playing a lot of zone to cover for those corners yep. that have been so vulnerable. Nice job of coming up making the hit. Four wide, second and ten. Swing pass. Hunter brings it in, and he is brought down by Kelly for a loss. And it's a real appearance that the brick of the young defenders are not fooled by very much. Yeah, Ed Ta'amu was out there leading on the screen, and he just flat out didn't make the block. Your big linemen are out there, and sometimes they get caught in space, Bill, when the old linemen try and go out on a screen. You're dealing with those linebackers who try and make make moves on the old linemen, and they can't keep their feet. Well, the up. linebackers are just better athletes, yeah. and you've got to go out there and throw. You've got to try to get a piece of it and make it break stride. Rice, six out of 14 through the air. That one batted around and almost intercepted. Intended for Josh Lyman and Jared Lee got a hand on it. There were actually about three white jerseys who all had a shot at it. But it falls harmlessly to the church. Bill, do you get the feeling that we're going to see an interception over the middle? That ball is just getting hung up there. He's just been lucky to yeah. Christensen, and he's making mistakes throwing that ball up in there. And Tommy Lee, his offensive coach, is going to get him over there, and I'm sure they're going to hear about it. And they, you may expect to see more outside throwing. Ed Stearns is deep. First drive of the third quarter started in promising fashion for Utah. It ends with a punt and a Utah roll out of the end of the 15. 11.55 of the third, 19 to 10 BYU. Jared Lee's got a pick at a huge hit to his credit tonight. And not much has gone the way Ron McBride would have hoped in the Holy War in Salt Lake. Packed house, Rice Eccles Stadium, which will also be the site of the opening and closing ceremonies in the 2002 Winter Olympics here in Salt Lake City. Just remodeled a couple of years ago. Lance Rice's grandfather, Bob, the Rice in the Rice Up Eccles. Now he hooks close to a first down. Brought down by Sheldon Decker, the middle linebacker. Well, another signature win in Lavelle Edwards' 29 years, back 10 years, defending national champ Miami in Pro Bowl. With 10 seconds to go in the half, tied Denver to Andy Boyce. Cougars up 17-14. Down 21-20, Denver's third touchdown pass of the game. Mike Salito, the eventual game winner. Irvin Lee breaking up Craig Erickson's final attempt, and Brigham Young celebrates one of the biggest wins in school history, 28-21. That basically made Ty Detmer the Heisman winner and he held up the whole rest of the 90 seasons. But from that game on, it was his Heisman to lose and he didn't lose it. Sataki will be close to the first out hit by Kamoy Atu. Wise play calling by Lavelle Edwards and his staff here on the offensive side. The young quarterback, Doman, gaining confidence with his inside throwing. Now second and short. They hand it to the big fullback. Drive for the first down. You got to wonder when it's going to hit Lavelle. You know, that he's going to be next spring when he's not out there or he's not going to be recruiting right now. I mean, at what, what point you wonder where it's really going to sink in? When his handicap drops down to under about five. <laughs> Isn't it already there? This is just as close as it is. He'll get the first. Doman, short toss, caught. Is Opa Hungawi near the 40, giving 13 yards and a crash landing? Brandon Dart in his final game of the seven year career gets him. Think he wants a couple extra yards here? No he going Watch him put the ball away this time. Much better than the last time when he coughed it up. That ball's riveted to his ribcage. Look at you as a coach. We're talking about the ball in his security. chest. He just tried ball to jump security. over the old people, Bill. Yeah. Ball security. So it's such a coach. <laughs> I'm kind of mad at that. Age. Roman Option pitch Staley blasted at the line of scrimmage. Oh, Mike tried to pick up two. All on his own. And oh, more yeah. late contact oh. the more flag. That's going to be on BYU. That's going to cost him 15. There's a whole lot of knocking going on in this game. It's a rock'em, sock'em rivalry game. That's just stuff that's going to happen. But you got to be careful in that case, and you can you can hit hard. You can get your extra shots in if you want, but quite honestly, you got to try and hide them from the rest a little bit better. They didn't do it here. 
Are, are, you, are you suggesting that you try to be subtle about something? Absolutely. Like I don't think, you know, what happens, everybody that played football a long time has done some things that we're not so proud of. Yeah. And usually it's at moments like this, and they're hard to hide, Michael. I'll be proud of them. I'd just be not proud I got caught. <laughs> I didn't say to be proud of them. <laughs> I've, got, I've, only, I've all had a whole year to work with you, and I've accomplished nothing. <laughs> you the big old line. <laughs> <laughs> look, look at the end of the play. I think it's for Cubbins. It was 69. I think he's going to come in at the left of your screen with the shot. See, coming up, coming up. A little bit after that. There you go. That shot right there in the back of the head will do it every time. Oh, yeah, right in front of the ref. Four seconds after the whistle. You've got to hide that thing. BYU 25. So, second and Provo. Swing pass. Ryan McDonald incomplete. Send it down below to Michelle. Well, you guys, also at halftime in the locker room, Brandon Doman was pretty fired up. He implored the defense to stop Utah right away and get the ball back to the Cougar offense because he thought they could score right away. And one quick aside on just how chilly it is down here in the BYU locker room, and I haven't seen this before, they were serving chicken broth to the players. Now, Mike Golick, did you ever get chicken broth in a locker room? Joe Montana, 1979 Cotton Bowl, chicken soup at halftime, came out for one of the great his comebacks in college football. I was there. Still, yeah. still can't feel my toes. <laughs> I was in a press box. Sataki takes the screen across the 40 to the 42, upended there by Dart. Hitting in his licks tonight at 17, but it's not near what they needed for the first. Michelle, thanks for bringing up the memory there of that chicken broth incident. And actually, what would be served would be bouillon, hot bouillon in the locker room. You'd come in and that's what they would serve if it was real cold out. So chicken broth or, or hot bouillon certainly would be something that you would drink in the locker room. Now, something you certainly don't want to chug, though. Well, what, what team did Montana play for? Notre Dame, my friend. Don't you ever forget that. Is that four words? <laughs> Aaron Edmonds. The kick to Steve Smith after this 20. Don't come close. And a boomer by Edmonds. Here they mark this out. Will be the key, and they'll say the eight-yard line. A terrific boot by Aaron Edmonds. Brigham Young, 19 to 10. They get a 51-yarder. Business is an art. Whether you're in a service business or maybe a family business even a fun in the sun business you've got to look a breed apart now there's a printer that's smart and fast xerox inkjet printers at 149 dollars they're just a smarter breed of inkjet printers because sooner or later everyone's got to take care of business now available everywhere my name's John Woolard. I rescue alligators for a living. John Woolard is one brave guy. It's pretty exciting. But would John Woolard ever insure his car with some kind of cut-rate car insurance? Cut-rate car insurance? I'm not that brave. When it comes to car insurance, why take a chance? Be like this State Farm customer and get an agent you can rely on, plus competitive rates. Go on now. Before Kurt played in the Super Bowl, oh, mommy the ball. he and I played in the yard. Oh, mommy the ball. Good one. Afterwards, we'd head inside for some chunky New England clam chowder. It filled him up right, as it still does. And now it has bigger chunks of tasty clams, so it's heartier than ever. Throw mommy the ball! It's nice to see the things you love only get better. Oof. Campbell's Chunky New England Clam Chowder. Try the new Pop Top. A pivotal game for Virginia Tech as they reach for a BCS bowl bid against interstate rival Virginia. Virginia versus Virginia Tech at 7.30, Saturday on ESPN. Important to be dressed appropriately for the conditions. Head to toe. <laughs> you get a little like that. That looks like the Manchurian candidate. Look at those lids. Are you kidding? There you go. That's it. Hey, that's done. That's you know, tough. That's done. You know, tough done. That's three city. <laughs> Edmonds backing Utah up to his eight-yard line with a 51-yard punt. Adrian Hunter still the setback. Leads it out and takes. Fights his way to the 15. 
Utah with very little consistent offense, but still just nine down. But this has been somewhat of a chippy game, the rivalry. You see a little extracurricular, trying to plan ahead there. Some good, hard, clean hits. Hello to the quarterback. Some not-so-clean hits. And that little extra trickle, you got to be careful throwing the punch. You see BYU just got nailed with that a bit ago. You can do hard hits, but you can't cost your team 15. Brett Kiefer getting away with that. This to the chop. Hunter. Here's the file, maybe a yard. And the bad news for your team is if you get caught, and so many times you do get caught, and contrary to your opinion, Mike, you shouldn't just do it so you can't do it. You shouldn't do it at all. But when you get caught, you do stop your team's drive. You do. BYU is coming off its goal line, had a nice drive going, and they had one of those 15 yarders, and all of a sudden they have to get the ball yeah. in. Yes, they got good field position, but uh, they don't have the ball. And I understand what you're saying, but, but I think at times there's, there's a place for a knee or a fist or an elbow. I really do. At times I really think there, there's a need for that to okay. send a message. Hey, thank you, Mike. Just can't get caught. Say good night, man. Third and three. Rice for Smith, just the second time they connect, and Steve Smith, ever dangerous, oh, gets a huge block, and the margin out of bounds at the 35-yard line, but the first time he is a factor at all, he takes a 20-yard. Tommy Lee, offensive coordinator for Utah, said we've got to find a way to get the ball to Steve Smith, now we know why. This guy is a big leader. Good gracious, look at the move. It's to the outside. Nice block coming back. Stayed up. Jared Lee's going to waste him, and it doesn't accomplish anything except to fire him up some more. I'd find ways to get that guy the ball about one out of three plays. Chris Christensen with the block downfield. Out of the line. 21 yards per catch. Leads the Mountain West. In this game last year, he fractured a vertebra, and it cost him a chance to play in the Las Vegas Bowl. We'd like some more where that last one came from. Over the middle, Christian. That's been his domain today, and that's close to a first down game. And two nice games on first down. Trying to answer what BYU has been doing that may be the most impressive statistic of the day. BYU averaging 5.2 yards per first down. Utah, 0.8 yards prior to this drive. Second, second and 9.2 is never good. <laughs> Distance has been as possible for almost two thirds of their offense at 105 yards. Pump fake, throw intended for Smith. Will there be a flag? No. Michael Lafitte had the coverage. Most of the crowd screaming for interference. Michael Lafitte was up in a hard corner in a two deep coverage in the zone. He was protected behind. When we say two deep coverage, we're talking about the corner has held deep. So he can break up with impunity. It does, he, he's just going to catch that ball if he can. He's not going to give off a bit from Smith. And it shouldn't have been thrown. With Smith, what I've noticed when he goes to the outside, he's locking in on a receiver. The coverage is getting there a lot quicker than when he's going down the middle. He's able to look off a little more. Third, third and a little less than one. Chris Hope is very quietly had himself a fine night. Penetration that time, a very important play. And Mike, you know that wonderful feeling being a DT and making that play in the back. And, and that's D-line now. There's no more two-gap. No more just playing straight up on the no-lineman and playing them on the line and taking the gap on either side. Defensive lines today are much better athletes. They get on a corner, on a shoulder, and they just blow through, and they say, we're going to tackle the ball carrier on the way to the quarterback. And that's exactly what D-tackle did there. So again, a Utah drive. Steve's uh, stalling out around midfield and Golden Weapons. Very high stands up the fair pass at the 22. A 34 yarder. That's right on the Michelle. All right, I'm joined by BYU Athletic Director Val Hale. And while the rest of the nation is wondering who the next president of the United States will be, the whole state of Utah is wondering who is going to succeed Lavelle Edwards. The name we've seen published lately is Gary Scroton, currently the offensive coordinator with the Chicago Bears. How close is that to becoming official? Well, we agreed before the season that we were going to try to keep the focus on Lavelle in the season, and we wouldn't announce anything before this game. Now that this game has ended, we'll get serious. We'll start... Uh, just making the decision and hopefully get things sewn up in the next, uh, well, in the very near future. Very near future. Could that be as early as next week? 
Well, we don't know yet. I mean, it would be nice if it were, but we're not sure that it can be done that quickly. We hope it'll be at least in the next two to three weeks. Lavelle Edwards has developed a very distinct system at BYU. How much of that would you like to carry over into the next regime? Well, BYU has a tradition of great offense, and we would obviously love to continue that, and that's something that, that is important to us. Good luck with the search. Thanks. But no hints coming from Val Hale right now. Thank you. <laughs> Thank oh, you, Michelle, Bruce. I beg to differ. I think you just got a huge hint. Well, we uh, believe in great offenses, and we'd like that to continue. That just that has Gary Coden all over it to me, because maybe I'm jumping conclusions. You're the veteran of this interview, stuff. And Doman cuts it back. And look at all the room toward the middle of the field. Got a nice open field block out there by Mike Regal. And the keeper for Doman goes 16 yards. Well, all week on ESPN.com, the question has been out there. And uh, Mark Blazer Provo writes how can a new head coach come into BYU and gain the confidence of the players and the student body? One way you would think would be to continue what has been so successful. There's one way. Win the games. Win all of the games and do it for a long time. Then they'll say you're like Lavelle. I'm not kidding. That's what you have to do. to come by. He's hit for a loss by Garrett Smith. I think I think they'll stay within the family. As we're getting, I think we're getting a late flag down here. I think they're going to stay within the family, and like a Gary Croton or, or somebody who has ties to BYU and keep the same system. Boy, and recruit person. Yeah, yeah, that's that's just going to kill it. And recruit the same type of players and keep that system going. So that that's the direction I think uh, I think they're going to go. And I agree with you, Bill. About I think Gary Croton. I think is the name Michelle mentioned it before. That does seem to be the name out there. Now let's look at the latest 15-yard hit. Brandon Dart involved in this one for that blow behind uh, Jonathan Pittman. Yeah, uh, he hit him, and, and then he as tried to just surely, yeah. yeah, just as surely as the kid with no shirt on in 30-degree weather is done. Brandon, you've had a great career. You've been playing for 19 years. You yeah. finish it by running up the guy's back and then helping him up. He'll let you help him up. Seventh year, he wrote the NCAA asking for one extra year. They felt so bad about his injuries, they gave him two extra years. They are again markers down. As the Staley makes it for a short game. Uh, Utah jumped off sides here. He's five more yards again. Some bad mistakes. They got to get the ball back. This is not the way to do it. Hard count. Got him jumping. Got a free play out of it. Look at Brandon Dart and a miracle. He's still out there. Look at the legacy. Injury after injury. In 94, Kyle Whittingham says he was as good a safety as he's coached. He had a definite NFL future. But first, he tore a back muscle, his right MCL, a hamstring, the left ACL, broken right foot two years ago, right ACL. Last year, he has played in only 27 of 78 possible games. If you've ever rehabbed from one of those injuries, you'd never want to go through it. Incredible. By golly, he deserves seven years. And he never missed a game in high school. Sataki powering to the 36. Garrett Smith, another tackle. Could he now be Dr. Dog? <laughs> Ought to be. You know, and he never finished the season on the field. And knock on wood, this being the last game, get out of this one safe. But to never finish the college season on the field, always finished it in the training room. That is. And, and Dave, you said it, to come back from one major injury, but the amount he did, because that is the lonely time, that is the point in part nobody sees, the rehab by yourself, and nobody's fixing it. The coaches don't speak out, they just don't care. You're not saying, what they say about it now, they've never seen more determined kids. Well, and deep wide, open for a touchdown goes Mike Regal. 36 yards. All night long, we've talked about the vulnerability of the BYU corners. And now, depending on the coverage, the Utah secondary is caught with its pants down. A blown coverage here. Dyson thinks he's got zone help in the middle. 
nobody home in the free safety location, and he's already turning and looking because there was miscommunication on the coverage. It's the number one pass defensive team in the country. He's got scored on there in the pass. Watchman for the extra point. 26 to 10. Cougars, the third touchdown catch of the year for the junior from Tacoma, Washington. And a marker and another skirmish after the PAT. But Brigham Young's opened it up. Big over the years. ESPN's presentation of primetime college football is brought to you by Holiday Inn, who gives you more. And more is better. Offsetting penalties on the uh, PAT, which makes it 26 to 10 BYU. They open it up to a 16-point lead after the perfect strike on the blown coverage. 36-yard touchdown. 77 yards on the most recent drive. And the recent trend of the visitors controlling the series appears to be intact. Four years in a row. This game has been won by the road team. Patrick Dyson. return to the 31 on ABC tomorrow at 3 30 Eastern from LA number 10 Notre Dame takes on Southern Cal with the Irish needing a win to stay in the race for a BCS berth finish nine and two Trojans always tough on them out in the Coliseum 3 30 Eastern 12 30 Pacific tomorrow on ABC Mike prediction <laughs> come on by Rice, they're having a great year. By, by one point, that uh, gets him in. Not into the margin. <laughs> Rice wide open, Russell makes the moves on Staley and cuts back, and Michael Lafitte brings him down at the 40. But the job that Bob Davey has done yeah, and this is to get yeah. him some kudos and some security. Well, yeah, security being the key thing. It was a guy that was on the hot seat at the beginning of the year, and a lot of people have said it was the DCS or he was going to be gone, and he certainly is going to win the win over USC. There's such a great draw, draw for the ball. You know they'll get one of those at-large bids, end up in either probably the Fiesta or the Sugar Bowl. But my man Dola was not humming the Notre Dame song the first year. I remember that. I don't remember that. Second and two. Isaac Kelly, head on for a loss. Utah is not going to win this football game by running it up inside against those linebackers like Kelly and Inna and the rest of them, that big front four. They're going to win the game by throwing the ball intelligently and using play action. Boom, nobody's even on Kelly. Kelly just steps up and smashes the running back, Hunter. They're just doing a good job, as they have all year in the running game. They're vulnerable to the pass. BYU defense playing the way Ron McBride's unit had all season coming into this game. It was 166 total yards. Rice, too tall for Chris Christensen. See, Utah's done nothing at this point to make BYU believe they're going to go deep. They haven't hit any really pass, big passes downfield. They've been short passes that have turned into a couple of long runs. That's been about it. So there's been nothing that's gone deep that would make BYU back off at all. So they're ready for these short pass. Steve Smith, so dangerous. 21 yards for catch coming in, and they've really only thrown one uh, pass of any impact his way. Yeah. One catch for one yard in the first half. Letman handles the snap. Send in at the 27. So 2.44 to go, third quarter. All Brigham Young at this point. Utah is showing no signs of establishing anything on offense. It's really a, the, the problem for them. Yeah, and as long as they are struggling like this, BYU is going to mix its coverages, stay in the zone, stuff the run, and it's going to be really hard to isolate those corners. I don't care how much trouble they have. And for Utah's offense being bad, their defense has usually picked them up. Number one against pass defense in the country. They just have a blown assignment for a touchdown. They're going to have to make a big play here to help their offense out. But and we go back to the rivalry thing, Dave. The, the fact that this is rivalry and there's all this emotion, anything can happen. So, I mean, we're still in, very much in a football game. 
number of flags tells you what kind of rivalry it's been. Yeah, I agree. There'll be another 15 yarder. Luke Staley. Fouls for a gain of one. For a game that's nicknamed the Holy War, there's been some unholy hitting down there. <laughs> The Beehive Boot, which goes to the winner. Beehive Boot goes to the, the best team in the state. Both these teams beat Utah State, so the winner of this one gets the coveted award. What is a Beehive Boot? I don't know. We're gonna, I think we need to ask Michelle that. It's a lot like an old open bucket. It is. Michelle's a lot smarter than all of us, so we need to know. I knew that. A trophy. Doesn't matter what it is. It's a, it's it's coveted. And they play hard for it. You can tell it's coveted. Like the Stanley Cup, where each player like gets to take it home. Not quite that kind. All right. Second and nine. Staley to the short side of the field, across the 30. That's it. We send it to Reese from Arizona. Arizona State up there. Dave, we saw this play a little bit earlier in the night. Clarence Farmer putting it on the ground in his own end zone. Terrell Suggs recovered it. Arizona State finishes off Arizona. 30 to 17, the final Sun Devils are bowl eligible for this time. So he ends on an up note. Good for Bruce Snyder. He gets one more game before his walking papers. How about that? I don't know, how, Bill, how would that feel as a coach? I mean, you got one more game, you know you're gone. Unfortunately, I know exactly how that feels. That's <laughs> why so I asked you. <laughs> Not very good. <laughs> Goldman running for his life on third down, and he's one for Pittman, and it's two yards too deep. He had beaten Jeff Ray. Wonderful blitz pickup by Luke Staley, number six, who looked like he might be down for the count. He's groggily coming off the field, but he stepped up, and he flat nailed the blitzer. There's old Luke. Nice job, Luke. He kept him off your quarterback, gave him a chance to make the deep throw. He almost connected. Once that ever stay, stay healthy for a whole season, you'll be super dangerous. I haven't seen Edmonds out there too often. Smith, the dangerous punt returner, who started the day needing 80 for the Utah career punt return yardage record. They almost blocked that one. Not much at all on the return by Smith. And another fight way back at the 25-yard line. Good heaven. <laughs> it's a punter oh, getting knocked around by a big guy. Garrett Smith and Edmonds toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Yeah, Garrett Smith taking on, a, uh, creating a mismatch there and um, enjoying it. And how, the reason they missed that block punt because they laid out. You need to run right through the ball, put your hands on it. Don't lay it. You're almost too <laughs> Jeremy Lyman came close. Jeremy Lyman needs to run right to the spot and just take it off his foot. And they've seen enough of Lance Rice for now. Darnell Arsenault, the senior out of Honolulu. Goes deep out of the shotgun. And he finds Cliff Russell inside the 30. Well, there's a quarterback change that works. Really, I swear, right before that play, I was going to say I agree with the move. Agree with the move? I really to know is an experienced yeah. guy who has led this team to victory before. In fact, we had the bowl game against Fresno last year. He came in at quarterback and led that, led that team to a victory. He comes right out, and what does he do? He attacks the weakness of BYU. Staley is a day late and a dollar short on the coverage, and they got a long game. They're in business in the 28-yard line. 42 yards as Lance Rice... Now on the sideline, applause. Hunter. And we got down below to Michelle Tafoya. Well, Dave, Utah still without running back Adam Tate, the starting running back. He sprained his right ankle in the first half. Everyone remembers how long he was down. He's taped up and not officially out of this game, but the Utah training staff tells me he's really unable to perform as usual, which is why the coaches have kept him sidelined, Dave. In the first half, he carried only twice for minus two yards. Hunter now for the game, 11 carries, 31 yards. So Tate continues to watch. Weaves his way inside the 20, and with that extra reach, he will have first down yardage. And the book on our show, he's got, he's got uh, six touchdowns and eight interceptions. He'll make some poor judgment throws. 
And that's why the, where the eight interceptions occur. He actually has been playing some slot this year, playing out of receiver, just to keep him on the field. He's such a great athlete, but they did need a spark here. Uh, Lance Rice was certainly struggling, was very inaccurate with his passes. So they go to Arsenal, the experienced quarterback, for a spark. And we talked to his coordinator, Tommy Lee, and asked about his attitude. He said he, he handled it beautifully. But he stayed with the team. That's why he's ready to play at this time. End of the third quarter it comes with a new quarterback making some things happen for the Utah offense. He's been sleepwalking for most of the first three, and they find themselves trailing BYU 26 to 10. One more quarter for Lavella Edwards as the Cougar coach. Is in the state of Georgia to give us credibility in a new program trying to get started. I was trying to learn how to be a head coach. Lavelle Edwards, no compensation, just showed up and did a wonderful job with our staff. There was nothing in it for him. He just wanted to give to somebody else into the game of football. And that's the reason everybody respects him so much in our business. And this guy defined the passing game, too, of what we see today. I mean, that's uh, of all the stats that we see, a lot of the football that we see on the field today is because of what that man did. Exactly right. You saw Steve Smith limping off in disgust, and now you're going to see a Utah timeout with a fourth and nine coming early in the fourth quarter. We're ways off, Reese. Almost 14 minutes to go fourth quarter, and Brigham Young leading 26 to 10. No matter what the situation on the scoreboard, that expression will never see the change with our legend. This will be a 33-yard effort by Tanishiro. Two years ago, he banged one off the right upright, which would have won it for the use of the 26-24 Cougar win. This one is straight through and brings the use within 13. What do you think of that decision, Mike? You, you know, kick the field goal, you're down 16, you got 14 minutes left in the game. Yeah, I think I like it. I think it's going back to Utah in the last defensive series. They went three and out. So I think maybe the coaches think, okay, the defense is playing well, we can get the ball back again, and they got a payoff at the end of that drive. They came away with some points. They also have a situation where two scores with two touchdowns right. win the game now with just kicking the extra point. So that was the right decision, and you get an A-plus on that. Thank you. Utah just scored. Look, never changed. Lavelle Edwards It's exactly the same, regardless of the score. You know, even when they were getting drummed at Syracuse, which halftime he said, this is the worst any of my teams have ever played. Well, a hint of a smile there, but that's what you usually see, no matter what, whether they're up 30 or down 30. Another rare smile, enjoying his last game on the sideline. Uh-oh. Mad there. Occasionally firing. <laughs> You couldn't leave your last quarter and not get on the officials. <laughs> well, not long ago, he was uh, immortalized in print by a local cartoonist. But a good idea, maybe for a fitting tribute for Lavelle as he winds down his career. I'll show you that momentarily. Wetman. David Christensen. <laughs> 27 yards for Christensen on the return. So that's what people have grown accustomed to for 29 years. So why not just go ahead and get the sculptors out and make it Mount Lavelle? You mean like Rushmore? Sure. Just carve him right into the Wasatch. <laughs> I mean, it's not like he doesn't have the numbers to be immortalized in that fashion. Numbers. That is amazing, those numbers. That would make an interesting mountain, wouldn't it? You wouldn't ski off of it, though. Brandon Bellman, all the way quarterback for the Cougars. Brandon throws almost Dyson's second interception. He broke on it. It was in his hands. He did everything but make the catch intended for Soren Holiday. There is a player, the best defensive back on the team, that is the best pass defense in the nation. He has got to make this catch in this situation. Nice job breaking in front, right with the receiver. Nice break on the ball, right in his hands. In this situation, big-time players have to come up with the big plays. That one's got to be caught. He's going to be sick about that one. He may feel worse about that one than he feels good about the one he caught. Yep. The first hit of the game, he returns 24 yards for still Utah's only touchdown. Doman picks up his own fumble. 
and reaches the 30 underneath Jason Kalfuzi. One of the few ways BYU can lose this football game is to make throws like that against Dyson. Now, I think you get your quarterback over there, Doman, and say, you see number 21 over there? You know where he's going to line up. You know the throws we're calling. And right now, we don't want to test him. So let's just read the stuff away from Dyson. Let's don't give him one. So he's going to catch the next one. Big third and nine here for the Utah defense. West of the Mountain West across the board. One of the top ten units in the country coming in. Six straight games they had surrendered under 300 yards. BYU sitting at 298 total yards at the moment. Quarterback draw, Doman. It'll be close to the line of scrimmage, that is. And, uh, yeah, two things there. A, they don't have the confidence in the passing game to try and get the first down. And B, too quick with that. He'll learn he's young. He needs to take that another step, let the, the routes unfold a little more, let the pass rush get by him a little more, and then start to run up the middle. But Utah's defense, two series in a row now, three and out, giving their offense a chance. That's right. He had a hole. Good job by Sukanik, the center, number 68. Had a little piece there, but he rushed it. Edmonds on the kick. Steve Smith has limped off a moment ago. That's a streak in an ankle. He's just going to be to 36. 11.57 remaining. 26-13 BYU. ESPN's presentation of primetime college football is brought to you by Subaru. Visit us at Subaru.com to see our full line of all-wheel drive vehicles. And by Tostitos. Dig in. Kick back. Stay all season. A little less than 12 minutes to go, and the Beehive boot will belong to the Cougars. 26-13 lead. Utah got a little something established when they changed quarterbacks and went to the senior Darnell Arsenault last time they had it. They got three out of it. Steve Smith limped off and returned that punt and stays in. A dangerous target out there if healthy. That's incomplete. Intended for Damian Hunter out of the backfield. Talk about decisions there. That was one of them. Steve Smith was wide open right on the hash mark. That's why Arsenal has eight interceptions as opposed to six touchdowns. The wrong decision sometime. That one was one of them there. Had a wide open receiver. Arsenal is in the top ten across the board in all passing categories in Utah history. Ten games this year. He's at 55%, but more interceptions than touchdowns. Eight to six. And a lot of defenses feel that the better when he scrambles, because that takes the dangerous wideouts. Smith and Russell out of the game. Second and ten. This is Josh Lyman. Nice move after the catch to the 48. And enough for a first down. A gain of 11. If you are tuned again for basketball, that's next. The Tebow preseason NIT championship from Madison Square Garden. Number one Duke and Shane Battier against Temple. Soon as we finish... The final game of Lavelle Edwards' coaching career at Rice-Eccles Stadium in Salt Lake City with Bill Curry, Mike Golick, and Michelle Tafoya, Dave Barnett with 11.36 remaining. BYU trying to make it five years in a row the visitor wins in this Utah rivalry. Arsenault, another completion with another nice move after the catch. This time, it's Christensen to 41. And a gain of 11 again. What you're getting here is receivers that end up in the zone matched up on the linebackers. And that's what happened. And that's an easy matchup for Christensen. You see it's zone coverage right in the middle. And there's a linebacker. There's Anna. And that's, a, that's an easy matchup for the receiver to outrun or outmaneuver the linebacker. Get the extra yard. BYU's going to stay in this zone and make them come down the field without making a mistake. The theory is they'll knock one loose and pick one. Draw out of the gun. 
Cougars all over that one. No game. The big hit from Michael Lafitte. You could tell from the way that Darnell got up off the ground. He knew he had made a mistake. He can't run sideways and make this thing work. He's got to get up the field and get what he can. And try to make people miss and break tackles rather than run to the sideline. Has had Arsenault as a starter, has had TD Croshaw as a starter. Croshaw effective in the last meeting, a win at Pro Bowl. Lance Rice for the end of the year. The offense going nowhere. He goes back to Arsenault here in the fourth quarter. Arsenault going deep. Nice catch. Christensen's has made him all night over the middle. He's still going to the 13 yard line. 30 yards, he is the master of bringing in the high pass over the middle. And again, they're going the receiver and by the linebackers in the zone coverage again. And they're doing it before. Right here, look at the space he has with the linebacker and the safety still back here, not in the view. It's a good job of finding the hole. The backer in that case may not have got enough depth. Or just a good job by the receiver finding the hole and a good job getting the pass there before the safety could come up and make the play. Huge first and ten to 13 of the Cougars. Two touchdowns away from a comeback. Arsenault sets up the screen. The tight end, Matt Nickel, does well to get back to the line of scrimmage. Cougars messed that up very nicely. Mainly Chris Hope, the defensive tackle. Boy, at halftime, the Utes had managed only 100 total yards, and now much more respectable 171 since halftime. Well, and the Cougars are just over 100. I'm going to say again that BYU's approach to this situation, they've got a good lead. They're protecting their corners with a lot of zone coverage on the fear that Utah cannot continue to go down the field as they get into the short field here now with only 25 yards to work in without making a mistake. Three wide outs all right. Arsenal throws that way. The fade in the end zone. No flag. Incomplete for Cliff Russell. Dustin Staley made some contact, but not enough to draw the flag. Absolutely correct. No call. The receiver runs into the defender and then claims pass interference. Be very clear. Russell going to the corner. He breaks back inside. He goes into the corner, Lafitte, who has perfect position, no foul. You see those plays nowadays, Bill, they really go high and outside more than in the inside. The ball was supposed to yeah. be thrown over his outside shoulder. Good point. Well, you're right. It seems like every incompletion now, somebody's up looking for a foul. I have it. It's going to be Russell that time. Low snap, Arsenal has to scramble. He does it well. But runs out of room and is run down at the 15-yard line. Elon Edwards, the senior safety, got it. Great job. Not a good job, but a great job by Hans Olsen right there. Looks like Arsenal is going to make it to the corner, and here comes somebody inside out like he shot out of a cannon. And who is it? It's big old Hans. Look at him. He's dying. Look at that D-tackle. He turned it on. Yeah. That D-tackle turned oh, yeah. that thing back inside and forced him into the traffic. Good job, Hans. Yeah, Nickel Merlin would be proud of you. That's how he played all the time. And on fourth and 11, down by 13, you got to go for it with eight minutes remaining. Well, he got a first down just inside the four. Arsenault will throw the fade again into the end zone. And this time there will be a flag. It'll be thrown on Danny Phillips. Intended for Russell again. And, and this time they're going to get the flag because the ball was on line this time. And the, and the DB never looked back. If you're going to make a play on the ball. This, in this case... Danny Phillips, he's got to look back. Watch, he keeps his head on him the whole time and then throws his arms up. Never looks back to make a play on the ball. Good call. Will that get a rise out of the ball? Yeah, it will. Yep, didn't want to see that. And it's the same thing that's been haunting this BYU team all year long. You're doing a good job. You make a big play. You get him in a tough situation. 
and the corners can't hold up their end of the bargain. Now you got to suck it up on the goal line somehow get them stopped. As Utah is threatening, Duke and Temple have just tipped off in the finals of the TiVo NIT preseason tournament. We'll keep you up to date. Back to football. The long back. And takes the handoff. In for the touchdown. This fight is broken out. It was the Utah players smashing each other up. Beating each other up. Celebrating. I'd be scared to score in today's football. I might get beat up. What a great, great drive, though, yeah. by Borkton. Yeah. Really and, nice. Yeah, and back to what we were talking about, BYU's theory of defense was that they were going to be able to force a mistake at some point, and they never got that done. And a hero can make it a six-point deficit. 26 to 20 with over half the fourth quarter to go. Suddenly there is light along that youth bench. Fortune for the touchdown. Fortunes have changed for the youth. shot of adrenaline all through Rice Eccles Stadium after Thomas Fortune scores. The junior out of Colorado Springs makes it 26 to 20. BYU dominant throughout the second half. The ball rolls off the tee before Wetman can lay into it. I thought he missed it. <laughs> you were just hoping. I did. I thought he missed it. I was looking for a mulligan or something. <laughs> <laughs> we get another one on this tee. I swear, I thought he missed it. He's just about to kick it, and it's just falling down. <laughs> Good thing he didn't tear a hammy. Well, you're not kidding. I've seen some terrible falls by those little fellows when they went up there and that thing falls over. The wind has died down to a virtually nil. Teed up the way he normally does. Wetman does drive this one deep again for a touchback. And Michelle, what's it like now on the Cougar sideline? Well, what a sequence, Dave. I mean, they they were feeling good about their defense. Then the pass interference call infuriated this sideline. Then the score went in for Utah. Initially, they were deflated, but just momentarily. Then every player sort of took on an air of, okay, it's back to work. Let's go out there and do what we have to do to win this game, Dave. Well, what they got to do is get a good final seven minutes and 46 seconds so they can start by taking a lot of that time off the clock for the Utah offense here. And the Doman can get something cracking. Doman, 11 of 23, 199 yards through the air. A touchdown and an interception for a touchdown. And has a day and a half here. Now has to scramble. And after all that, we'll lose four yards. Olaval finally cracks him down. Two series in a row, Utah's been out, three plays and out. BYU's goal, Bill, in my eyes, should be get 11 yards each series. Just move the chains, just keep the clock going. Don't go for the big hitters, just move the chains. I think you're exactly right. That, that just seems so obvious, and yet sometimes you lose that in a game like this, and you get to thinking, man, we gotta, you know, we gotta get fancy. And I don't, I don't suggest that that's what they were thinking, but you got it exactly right. Mahake Kamoi Atu limping off. This would have been his last year, but he uh, graduates in four years in sociology, so he earns his fifth year of eligibility. The partial qualifier coming out of Tohoku, Hawaii, originally. They don't need to lose Kimoraki right now. Now Vale Sape replaces him. And they're ready to tee off on Bellman on second and 13. Here they come. Blocking is good. Staley spins out of a couple of hits and reaches the 23. Duke and Temple in the finals in Madison Square Garden. Preseason NIT. Restate. Dave Temple's got a couple of those big guys that Golick would love. Ron Rollers and Kevin Live. Wide bodies. They couldn't keep up with Carlos Boozer there and the devil. Up by one, Earl. 
Duke is awfully strong, but so does Arizona. Hard to pick between those two. That will follow the Beaver preseason NIT championship game for New York City. Third and six. Clock running down near six minutes. Bellman beats the blitz, slips it out to Sataki, down at the 25, a nice open field hit out there by Jeff Ray, the corner. All night long, Sataki has been one of the more dominant players in this game at the blocker, and then is an open field runner. This time, Ray comes up and gets his job done at the most propitious moment. Good tackle, good job on a big back and a good back. Well, first off, I don't know what propitious means, but I'll just move on from that. Second, Jeff Ray is 164 pounds. Sataki's 245 pounds. What a great open field tackle. Yes, sir. Right around the ankle. Get it. A very short low kick and fielded on the run. May have been roughing. There is a flag down where the ball was kicked. Nope, it's holding. Holding. It's flaking. Wow. 38 yard kick. There's the call. In fact, you could probably call this one tackling. This is just hanging on because I don't want him to block this kick. I'm going to grab him by the shirt. Well, here's That's the thing. What it's called. Do you take this one, Bill? You're at the 45 yard line. Do you move him back and make him kick again? That could be the question. I make him kick again and I set up a return. You got Steve Smith back there returning. If Steve Smith is full speed, the answer is absolutely, and he's still on the field. Holding on the kicker. Ten yards from the previous spot. Repeat fourth down. Oh, this would be real easy to see on the replay. Just watch the guy getting held. <laughs> yeah. The right side of your screen. Well, it's, it's, it's the left <laughs> tackle that does the holding. Here comes for here, here we are right here. I'm beat. I'm going to grab that shirt. Jeremy and Lyman. I'm going to get caught. Jeremy Lyman. In. And uh, Andrew Fails, number 37, will be a grabbing him. So they will have to back up and snap it at the 12, and Edmund stands in his own end zone. Snap, a little on the high side, too. So is this one, but he handles it. And a much better kick. He backs Smith up to his 42. Just off stay in bounds. Gets a good block. By Lyle. Here goes Smith. Another great block. Bale gets him at the 30. A 29-yard return of a 45-yard boot. And the Utes sense the comeback. They've got five minutes in which to pull it off. Not that long ago, Steve Smith was limping off after turning an ankle. And right now, it looks as quick as ever. Well, you have a right return. It actually worked to their advantage that the ball was kicked way left. That means the cover team is really coming right at the return man. So you can easily set up the wall. And all he's got to do is get right around the corner. And then he's got a lot of open space, picks up a couple of nice blocks down the field. So it really actually worked to their advantage that the punt was where it was. Lyman, the guy that was held on the previous punt, provided the first key block for Smith. And from the 29, first and 10. Back in the backfield is Hunter. we a pickup of about six, brought down by Paul Walkenhorst. Bill, that, uh, that momentum is changing jerseys, isn't it? Old Mo has jumped yep. into the red shirts here, and the left side of the offensive line is getting energized. Michael Richardson, the center, is such a fine athlete. He's taken some, some personal issues to really contribute to this team. Three different positions. Ahmed, the left guard, number 75, Calcusi, 56, Doug Calcusi, that is, one of the brothers. Good blocking. Second and four. Arsenal again flips it to Hunter. And third and short, third and about two coming. Basketball is coming as well. We'll get to Temple and Duke as soon as we're done here. Four minutes of change to go. Do we have to have round ball season? 
Absolutely. It works out perfectly. Actually, Bill, this weekend, the end of the, really the regular season of college football is done. You get like a month and a half break before the bowl. So now we got college basketball to go to. Dave's going to be calling games. Michelle's going to be calling games. We'll watch them doing all the basketball. We need to work. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you played a lot of basketball, Bill. That's what I do. He need to get just inside the 20s. And they call that Fortune, who got him the touchdown, and he easily gets him the first down. Now we've got to talk about the right side of that offensive line. Actually, you know what? BYU getting knocked around. Ola Olsen and Ryan Denny over there. Jordan Gross, number 69. Kevin Wilson, 61. These two right here smashing off the football. Establishing a new line of scrimmage. Look at that good movement. Not the prettiest blocks in the world, but effective. It's a guy that appeared all the four times for nine yards all season until this fourth quarter. He's having a touchdown and now a first down, and he cuts that one inside the 15. Let's send it down to Michelle. Well, Dave, for the first time tonight, signs of panic on the BYU sideline. Coaches screaming at officials, and absolutely every player riveted to every bit of the action, and very, very little talking down here, back upstairs. They don't want to be known as only the second team under Edwards to have a losing record and to send him to retirement for the loss. And frankly, there have been games this year that were embarrassing for Lavelle. He didn't say it in those words, but he did say that some of the performances were among the worst his teams had ever had, and nobody wants to go out with those kinds of things being the hallmark of their squad, especially this season. And I'll take the other side of it, as I did in the open, and talk about the Utah players. And, and again, they respect what Lavelle Edwards did, but they want to win their last game, the seniors for Utah, and they're making a heck of an effort in doing that right now. Again, they want to go and shake Lavelle Edwards' hand after the game. It's a great career, but... You know what, you're leaving here with your last game being a loss. You know, Mike, you and I both played a long time. Playing against a great coach, it's a big deal yep. for your team to be able to beat that Absolutely. great coach any time, but especially in a moment like this. Second and eight. Fourth quarter started, 26-10 BYU. Chris Holt, we are playing, he was drawn offside. And he points at Ed Ta'amu. Dead ball, false start, offense, by your ability, remains second down. And Hook is correct. And now McBride's turn to Stu. That seems like a small thing. That is a monumental thing at a time like this. Ball's been moving on the ground primarily and short rhythm passing. And you took a five-yard loss. It's called drive killer. Second and 12 now. The left guard, number 75. Ta'amu, that, that's all you got to do. You move like that, you have sinned. <laughs> <laughs> and the penalty is five. You're sending the football guys, right? Coach says, go and send no more, son. <laughs> That's uh, sort of what he said. Or a little stronger. All right, so now, one What a call. Chalk that up to Mr. Tommy Lee, offensive coordinator and play caller for the youth. What do you do? A lot of emotion. You just made a big mistake. It's second and 12. You fake it into the line. A little wide delay. The tight end runs clean because the linebackers have to honor the run. That's exactly right, Bill, because we, we've seen the run be successful. They stuck with the running game. It hasn't been successful. And they do the fake, and he's wide open. Two years ago, Ryan Kandashir had a chance to win it and banged a short field goal off the right upright. He has a chance to give them the lead with a PAT with 2.16 to play. As it missed all year, and this one is good. Pandemonium in Salt Lake City. How this one has turned on the Cougars and on Edwards. 17 unanswered Utah points. Welcome. Welcome to America Online, new version 6.0. And the biggest of the year for the Utes. We have a 17 to nothing fourth quarter runner. And again, the Cougars will have to start from their 20. Utah pounding the ball, pounding the ball, pounding the ball. These linebackers right here are going to step up to meet the run. 
and with a very clever fake, nice fake, the tight end off and running and down the middle into the end zone with the football, Matt Mitchell. Mitchell's got the toughest job. He's wide open, and he has to catch it. How many times you're in that situation, you know you're wide open, all you have to do is catch the ball. You're walking into the end zone. This game changed immediately when the quarterback changed. John Mel Arsenault, the reason that Utah leads this game as much as anything else. They come after Dolman with a blitz. Blocked well. He throws on the run. It is batted down by Olabau. Kautai Olabau signed out of Hawaii the same day three other Hawaiians, including Chris Kuamatsu Ma'afala, signed. Are they ever glad they got him? And we're talking about seniors trying to end their career the right, right way. Olabau doesn't let. Dolman get outside again. That's when he's been most dangerous. They didn't keep him in the pocket, but they stayed in his face. We have all three of their timeouts. Second and ten. They come after Dolman sacked at the seven. Andy Bauer, his eighth of the year. Another senior in the group. Stepping it up right here. Just going to beat the tackle to the outside. Takes his shoulder. Not a good job by the tackle moving his feet at all. Just gets beat. Ben Archibald. This Utah defense has been fantastic. Bethel and Duke coming. A minute 27 in counting here. One point game of the Cougars up against it now. Third and 20. From the 10, Dillman waits, fires short, it's caught, short yardage for Saylor, and it comes loose. Recovered by Utah, will they rule it down? They will. No fumble. And just when we started talking about this, Utah defense is going to have to start making some plays, put their offense in position, that's exactly what they've done. Three series before this one, three and out, forcing the punts, now they're coming up with another big series. Timeout call with a minute four. Lavelle Edwards, the first of his three timeouts, never been in this position since 1973, his only losing season as the head coach of BYU. And he's that close to finishing his final season, five and seven. Good morning, everybody. This is your captain speaking. We'll soon be cruising at 3,000 feet, nonstop at Tampa. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy the flight. It's not 3,000 feet we'll be cruising at, but 30,000. Sorry for the mix-up. Uh, Captain, again, did I mention that we're not going to Chicago? Well, we are going to Chicago. Uh, Captain, again. One's the super freaky funky puncher. The other, a heavy-handed exit man. I don't have your money. Cool. I don't have your money. Cool. I don't have your money. Uh, let's get ready. Ready to rumble boxing round two with batter characters and bigger action. It's the undisputed, undefeated champion. Rated T for team. All right, gentlemen, I want a good clean. Earlier in the season, Lavelle told us he actually almost retired after last season, which ended in disappointing fashion with three straight losses. But he said, no, I'll come back. One more year, and then I'll call it a career. I don't know if he's wishing at this point <laughs> stayed with his uh, earlier instincts. Here's fourth and 13. Last gas time for the Cougars. Dolman lets it go. And it is caught at midfield. Jonathan Pittman makes the catch, and the Cougars are still alive. 34 yards. That's called a dash pattern. The quarterback drops back as if he's going to be in the middle, and then he sprints out with a seal block to the outside. Has plenty of time to throw. Great job by Dolman. Don't forget, Owen Potsman last week did a 56-yarder, six yards better than his best previous kick. So they are maybe not that far away from game-winning field goal range. We 
three timeouts left. Gilman, deep down the side again for Pittman, makes the catch, and he's in. How many guys in this huddle or in this timeout are saying, let's get this for LaBelle? Well, those two for sure, number 11 and number 5. If you don't think football teaches lessons, perseverance and attitude, Lavelle Edwards, all of these years, this has happened too many times for this to be an accident. This is what he has taught his squad. Precision passing of the football regardless of the situation. That's his third string quarterback executing that in one of his best receivers. Does he look surprised? Does he look joyful? Not really. 70 yards on two completions to Pittman. Now he runs Staley up the middle. He powers his way inside the five. 34 seconds and counting. And they'll call their second timeout with 28 seconds. This is a great football lesson. I mean, they are dead. They're dead. Fourth and 13 at Doman to Pittman, twice 70 yards. They're very much alive. Let's check in with John Saunders in the garden. All right, Dave, thanks a lot. Here at Madison Square Garden in the TiVo preseason NIT championship game, Temple has a lead of 1917 over the number one team in the nation. Dick. I'll tell you one thing. They've been giant killers before. They beat Cincinnati last year when they were number one, February 20th. Down in Cincinnati, they're doing a great job against the Duke pressure. Lynn Greer has been handling the pressure. A lot of three-point shots. The pass down to Boozer. The great point guard play of Duhon and Williams for Duke. We're going to get back here to wrap this thing up the rest of the second half. But right now, back to the end of the football. All right, John, we got 30 seconds to go. We have a one-point game, and Lavelle Edwards wondering how this 29 years is going to end. I'll tell you what, this team wants nothing more than to put that man on their shoulders and take him off the field one more time. Owen Potchman preparing to make that very thing a reality. And he's only four for four tonight. 45, 38, 35, and 22. They have one more timeout. So they can still take their pair of six. Cotton is in the eye. Three tight ends. And Doman will run the option. And cut it back. And reach for the end zone. He's got it. Touchdown, Brandon Doman. Brigham Young leads it. Let me just say, we, up here in the booth, right next to us is the BYU coaches. And the emotion that's being displayed up here, I, I can't even imagine what's going on down in the field there. They need to go for two. It's real obvious. They're up by five. They need to go for two. The team gets all excited. Somebody runs off the field and says, I can't find the tackle. Get them out there. We're going to go for two. Call the play. What's a two-point play? Hopefully somebody remembers that. You can be sure BYU's got a hold bevy of two-point play. Can you just think what's going through his mind right now, no, Bill? Lavelle, well, I mean, this, this you is know it. What, you know what I think is going through his mind? Let's see now. To make this two-point play, we need to run the spin out the trips. I really do. I think he's going to think football for this thing's over. And we're in trips. And it's a sprint out. <laughs> two for two. Go to the end zone. It is caught by Soren Halliday. <laughs> Thank you, Lavelle. <laughs> Bill Curry, you're the man. Very good call on two points. You don't have to be any genius to know this call. I confess that. Just go with the point sure, of Sure, you go ahead. Trips, you sprint to the trips. You hook up in the end zone. A third-string quarterback, Brandon Doman, who played like a champion down the stretch tonight. He got stronger as the game progressed. He did not beat cow, get cowed by the situation. Coming here on the sprint out. Driving it in for the touchdown. That's the first thing. Then on the two-point play, a very similar formation, but with a different call. Well, what do you
do you expect? That's what you've seen for 29 years. All business. He's not going to smile. That's just amazing. If he me. smiles when this is over, that will be an upset. That's, it's just amazing to me that this man, in the culmination of 29 years, is now 23 seconds away. He's winning by seven, and we're seeing the exact same expression we've seen since 1972. But I'm going to say this on a serious note. That is the hallmark of the great ones, their consistency. He is just like this all the time. The players know what to expect and how to behave in every situation. Quickly down to Michelle. Well, you talked about the BYU coaches upstairs making some noise. Down here, after the touchdown, after the two-point conversion, these players were going nuts, but Lavelle Edwards didn't move. He sort of walked back and forth, just like you've been seeing him. No expression change whatsoever. Meanwhile, a lot of these players in tears right now, seeing what they've just done. Well, if they watch Nebraska-Colorado early today, it's not done yet. But it's, it's close. 23 seconds and two Utah timeouts away from a memorable final game and final win for Edwards. They were dead. It was fourth and 13. And suddenly Doman to Jonathan Pittman for 34 yards, then for 36 yards. Then Doman keeps for the touchdown and finds Halliday for the two-point conversion. And watch this game will give you a whiplash. Back and forth, fourth quarter. BYU led it at one time 26 to 10, 17 straight by Utah until this last ditch drive by the Cougars to regain the lead and the kick will go out of bounds. And so Utah, 23 seconds, two timeouts to work with. Our Visa players of the game. Got to be Doman on the Cougar side. 284 yards against the defense that for the last six games have given up less than 300 total yards. And ran for 39 and the go-ahead score. Chris Christensen has been the favorite target on the Utah side. Seven catches for 147 got to give Dolman a lot of credit for hanging in there. It was inaccurate at the beginning, but he, they kept with the game plan. He was more accurate on the deeper passes and a lot of guts running the ball. So the youth from the 35. Arnell Arsenault went to need their comeback. Well, it was one play away from their memorable win. It may still happen. Here's Keith. He's got a lot of room. Straight up the middle of the field and across midfield. And they get the timeout with 14 seconds, a gain of 16. Utah's got to get six. And then hope for overtime. We're far from done. Be careful. You too. Oh. Fate made them allies. I'll get Marina. You get the map. How you get the girl and I get a map? Courage made them heroes. I thought you said this was going to be easy. Their quest for justice made them legends. Don't you think that's just a little bit out of our league? Now is your time to die. Dungeons and Dragons. Don't touch that. Rated PG-13. Starts Friday, December 8th. started saving for your kids' college education before they were born. Your wife still thinks of you as her knight in shining armor. And the neighbors know your door is always open. So it comes as no surprise that your auto parts are AC Delco. When the right way is the only way. AC Delco Automotive Parts. Still sweat it out over there. 14 seconds to go. 49-yard line from Ron McBride's offense. And one remaining timeout. They got to go the whole 49. <laughs> Arsenault. Incomplete. Intended for Josh Lyman. Well, when you think BYU comebacks... You have to think they were the greatest comeback ever. The 80 Holiday Bowl, 45-25 SMU late in the fourth quarter until Jim McMahon finds Matt Braga. And it's 45-31. Ensuing onside kickoff, Cougars recover. They score to make it 45-39. Bill Shefflin blocks a punt. BYU recovers. Hail Mary, final three seconds. Somehow it finds Clay Brown amid all those white Mustang jerseys, and BYU wins it. 
46-45, three touchdowns in the last two minutes and 33 seconds. This may be it for Arsenal and the youth. Can't get rid of it until he's already in the grass and it is incomplete with two seconds remaining. <laughs> this is unbelievable. It's just going to come down to a Hail Mary pass in the last game of Lavelle Edwards' 29-year career. <laughs> They've been living on this for his entire career, plays like this. You just never can put them away. They will not go away. That's the Lavelle Edwards mark from a football perspective, philosophy. Not talking about throwing the football, I'm talking about we don't give up. That's the way the guys play. And it is such a lesson to everybody who cares about this sport and about young people. And the emotion has got to start welling up for him now. Players start to surround him with congratulations. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, I, yeah, I know what you yeah. love. Those guys, I, I love those guys. I know he's stolen, Bill, and all that. But boy, you, you would uh, think the emotion just got to him. Oh, this face is short. Sure. Yeah. That's how he looked when he came on the field. He's trying to get away. <laughs> he is. He really. What a, what a reward, though. And so much deserved. We're going to go to basketball right after the final two seconds of this, and you can hear from Lavelle. We will chat with Michelle Tafoya. Afterwards, and again at halftime of the Temple and Duke, you can hear that interview. He's got one last play out of 29 years. And then he can close with win number 257-6 in the history of college football. He's won by many Hail Marys, and he holds one last one off. Thunder snap, Marcino. Will Dancy chased by Olsen, lets it go for the end zone. Bat it down, it is over. BYU wins it for Lavelle Edwards. And he gets the victorious ride after number 257. And the way he wins, Bill, is so apropos of how he won for all those years. You get a bunch of young people, you hope you can teach them some grit and determination, and they'll come through in the clutch. I don't know if anybody has gotten it done so many times for so many years. Again, our final score, the Cougars. He always has looked. Late in the fourth, BYU up 26-20. Darnell Arsenault complete to Matt Meikle, 20 yards for the touchdown. Utah up 27-26. A minute to go, fourth and 13 for BYU. Brandon Doman launching to Jonathan Pittman. It's a first down, second and one for BYU on the four. It's a scramble. Doman's gonna take it in himself for the touchdown. BYU in thrilling fashion, 34-27. The end of an era for Coach Edwards. It's been quite a week, this last game, and then, then tonight, and uh, the whole thing, and uh, I, I just uh, been so blessed all my life to have good health to last this long, and uh, and to do something that I've loved, and, uh, but you know, the, regardless of how it went this year, whatever, the, the, this was it, and, uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's been great, and it's time. Now, with me at halftime he said I'm out of shape he said I only played about 10 minutes I can't keep up with these guys today the pace of this game Woo! Iverson bouncing to morning his turnaround fadeaway is good so with 11 the East Trail